Yo, yo, peeps. So, welcome. Today's big day, we have the two fine gentlemen of first for figures here. I like to call them Tuckles and Alex. So, yeah, there you are. Do you yep. think so? We've got Alex and Alex. <laughs> and we need to welcome them into our, uh, yeah, man, there you go. Home team. So, we're going to be running through some bits and pieces, talking about the upcoming releases, future projects, things they've done in the past, how they got started. You know, all that fine goodness, statue goodness. Welcome them to our uh, show. We're really uh, honoured to have them with us. And obviously we've got Alex, other Alex there, the, the, the slightly hairier version. Yeah, the, the very hairy version. I've actually got a notebook today just to remind me what to, uh, yeah, to <coughs> bullet points. And uh, also also my note to uh, complain to British guests, but yeah, that's... <laughs> First off, um, I want to say, uh, I just wanted to quickly jump in and say, yo, yo, peeps, mad love. <laughs> Thanks very much for having us. <laughs> Chocks, we've made it. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. The boys at Rad Tide. Yeah, we made it. We made it. <laughs> the boys at Rad Tide are interviewing us. It's the big yeah. guys. Awesome. So, you know, obviously, mad love to you boys for uh, taking the time to give us the interview. Um, mad respect. Really pleasure to be here. That's great. Man. Have it's beautiful. Beautiful. Well, what we it's actually, um, we, we used to have guests for a while, and then um, after a while, we realized we, we didn't want to share the screen time, really. So uh, <laughs> we're trying to uh, kind of go back into that and see whether we can do some, uh, some interviews and see whether we can get some people on. Uh, and you're the guys we're going to test it out on. So you, yeah, you're, you're going to make and break whether we're going to carry on doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yes, hopefully there will be others that will imply that mm. this one was successful then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, George and I might go away going, I, you know how much am I, uh, uh, What am I seeing there? Is that a Mega Man that I'm seeing? Is that a Mega Man like belly? What is that? It's like his, his blaster. Yeah. Oh, that's and bad. I need that in my life, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's all this product yeah. like every live stream we put is on there capcom and it has like a the energy drink the energy bar oh <laughs> oh no it's reversible dang yeah, it's damn it <laughs> i need to get one of that gym man that's all awesome. absolutely it's almost like the, we i feel i figured like that's like free product placement that's right. all the time <laughs> <It's not capcom>. <laughs> 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 but that's uh what leads lead into this stuff then um so, I mean, what, what, how did you guys sort of actually set up uh, the company? What made you get into it all? Um, so, Obviously you're big video going, games. Yeah, so this is uh, going back 2003. I was at uni. Um, actually, I was, uh, I was in uni and I was in Beijing at the time. And my cousin said, oh, I have these, I have these uh, Schumachers. There's these statue things and I want to make more of them and i'll send you one of them you're in china you must be able to go and get stuff made i was like yeah sure no problem send it to me so i was like going to the factories and going ni hao you know like and they're like what the hell <laughs> and um i took it to them and having no idea what i was doing i just said right uh i've got this western western um uh client give me a commission and uh, we'll go like that and uh, it worked out i was going to get a pound to go i was like yes yeah, sweet sweet let's go um put it into production it was the absolute worst thing i've ever seen <laughs> the whole thing was shipped like with china post back in 2003 we're talking like desperation times right yeah. and it was in a it, it was just a simple base with a schumacher and 95 percent of them broken at the rip broken at the leg uh, at, at the ankle, all of them were just actually smashed into smithereens. Uh, and from there, I began to understand that it was more about, you know, the, starting to the long journey of understanding engineering on these things and the timeless mm -hmm. and the sort of all that sort of stuff. Uh, fast forward, when I came out of university, no, no, when I was still at university, 
And uh, my cousin then said, oh, oh, I really want to do WWE. He was a massive WWE, uh, his you know, father, so my uncle was a massive WWE fan, said, oh, let's do that. But you can't just do that. You need to have a license. And that was the whole idea of licensing. Whereas the Schumacher before wasn't actually technically licensed because it was like, oh, it's hand painted and you don't need to have a license. You didn't have any. So what's, uh, what's Schumacher? Sorry. Michael Schumacher, the Formula One dude. Oh, oh driver. Yeah, no, no, no. I, was, I, was, I thought that, but then I was it's thinking... It's why you don't do sports. Anime or something. It's why we always put you in gold, Alex. This is why we oh, no, I, I thought it might be some fucking anime or something like that. I was just thinking... <laughs> I'm, 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 here, I'm here Googling it. I'm like, he's is only the, car he's only the greatest fucking... He's only the greatest <laughs> F1 driver in history, Alex. Don't worry, he's no one important, bro. I know he is, bro. I just I thought I was, I was checking whether it was something else. Chill out, man. He's definitely not. He's not great. Blitzo. It's fine. Yeah, it's not big blitz. Um, so <laughs> then it, that was introduced into the world of water <coughs> licensing. And the world of licensing started to lead into other things. We had the, that led into WWE. And um, I can remember going to the UK Toy Fair, it would have been in London. And it was on that, it was in 2004, maybe, I think 2004. Hasbro came onto the stand and said, have you heard of a little something called Magic the Gathering? And we're like, yo, what's up? Yeah. Um, and yeah. that led on to, that led on to, I, you know, I knew a little bit about it, but not, not as much. And, with, and that Wizards of the Coast was obviously, that's a, a subsidiary of, uh, of Hasbro. But I was like, I moved the conversation to my passion, obviously an 80s boy, Transformers. Yeah. And that, that led into G.I. Joe as well. Uh, but it was more mainly for Transformers was, was the big deal on that. Um, and that, that same toy fair, I think it was 2000, it must have been 2004, um, a company called 4Kids Four Four Kids Entertainment, who is a subsidiary of 4Kids TV, I'm not sure if they're still around anymore, I can't quite remember, they're a licensing agency, okay, and their job is to go around and sell the licenses that they get, they get a commission based on how many royalties, all that sort of stuff, there's quite a lot of these licensing agencies out there, well this one, represented Nintendo and nice. the most amazing thing Very was nice. yeah I mean just and for me massive gamer growing up um it was it starts with Nintendo bro it all starts with Nintendo same for us so. um, the amount of hours as kids we used to spend fucking playing Duck Hunt and Mario Brothers excited bike <laughs> stuff man crazy shit Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. And you know that that sort of led on to that led on to um, the most amazing relationship was the fact that Four Kids Entertainment had just signed us up, only to turn around and said, "Sorry guys, we're not actually representing Nintendo in in like three months' time. We're dropping them for Microsoft." because there's something called it's coming up. Hush hush. It's called the Xbox. I was like, "Oh okay," <laughs> and they said. I said, well, what does that mean for us? And the license, he said, oh, well, here's the Nintendo of America contact. Off you go. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. Good luck, man. Wow. From heaven. And they, I, bet, I bet that's that's why they're not in business anymore, because I've not heard of them. So they went off with uh, Microsoft <laughs> and, uh, you know, kicked Nintendo to the curb, which is stupid. Very stupid. <laughs> Four Kids TV, they, they were massive back. Are they not around anymore? Four Kids TV? Maybe uh, they became Netflix. I'm not sure. It's one of those sort of like those sort of cartoon networks. You never know. Yeah, I've heard of Four Kids. Yeah, yeah. If I Google Four Kids TV, I'm sure something else is going to come. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, it was a channel, man. Be careful. Be careful. No, this is actually the computer, computer, Alex, the while, I'm, busting, I'm not. I'm yeah. not. I'm not vouching for you, man. <laughs> going to be one of those raid uh, TV raid things. But uh, if I do uh, Four Kids TV, it just comes up with like a YouTube channel with nursery rhymes, um, and it comes up with. Uh, Children's BBC, so which is BBC. Four kids entertainment. I mean, that's what though. So let, so let me under, let me understand something. You you actually got into this industry through somebody floating an idea for you, just purely based on your location, and then you decided at that moment that you were going to turn that idea into something actually actually fathomable, something real and highly a bit higher of a quality, and. And the engineering side of things interested you to the point where you decided I'm going to go out and and do this. So you 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 ha had a Nintendo license at this point. Now you've you, you've got in, you're getting in contact with Nintendo, right? Oh, this is that decision was made way before contacting Nintendo or getting into that thing. That was already already done. So I started this during university. So 
this is uh, the year of 2003. I distinctly remember it because it was during SARS, which was this thing, this sort of sort of respiratory disease that was going on in Beijing at the time. And uh, so, I you know I, I graduated university in 2005, but there was two more years at university because I did a Chinese course. So I happened to be in Beijing for that gap year because it's a four-year course. The second year is in, in in Beijing. I then actually took an extra year out just to stay stay longer in China to see what what could happen with this. So mm. I sort of, you could say I took a gap year. So I spent two years in China. That second year was all about trying to learn about this sort of stuff. And the final two years, I can remember sort of going to like the American Toy Fair in New York, going to the London Toy Fair, because I'm in Leeds for university and leaving, yeah. the uni leaving university for like a week or a week and a half, because I'm going to like these shows and under a company and all this sort of stuff. And that I come back and they're like, if you punk one more lesson, we're gonna fail you, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do I? So, I mean, the reality is, I never actually had anything other than first figures. Leaving university, this was already established, and it was uh, you're very early in the infancy, but it it seemed to snowball quite quickly in the sense that it went from WWE into the Nintendo, and then from the Nintendo, uh, at that sort of stage, it was really then focusing on video games because at, at, at that stage I sort of stopped becoming about the manufacturing side of things and I came I came to the front in terms of the other things in terms of design what products we choose um, you know what's the direction of the company that sort of stuff I took over that back in uh, sort of 2005 2006 and then it was video games video games video games sure just going just going back I did type in uh, uh, four kids entertainment came up with loads of children discos uh, then uh, I did the number four entertainment. They went out of business in 2012. They filed for uh, bankruptcy. Uh, yes, the number uh, four. Yeah. So they went out of business in, uh, after 46 years. But just to uh, just throw it in there, sorry, because I was. Uh, yeah. So how did you uh, how, how did you come up with that name? Where does it? Because it's quite interesting. When me and Alex started, um, honestly, some of the names that he come up with for our channel, Jesus Christ, I swear, <laughs> swear to God. So, and we did like analogy, you know, like when you take the letters of your own name and you mix them together and you try and come up genius. We got like anal farts and all sorts of things. I that was gonna weirdness. Be what name? Uh, but it, I mean, it came we, up with something gay something because. Uh, yeah, it was. Wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and it was literally just by typing all the, all the letters of our name into some random generator. And it just came up with some really random thing. And it was just like. Yeah, we yeah, don't have good letters for that. Can't use that. <laughs> How did First for Figures happen? How did that name, where did that come from? So First for Figures actually was um, at the same time before going into the licensing side of things. It was the whole fact that I was going into this industry where I'm liking going into these figures and stuff like that. And then it, First for Figures was actually conceived to be a distribution company. And uh, talking about getting the sort of Mickey Mouse stuff that you see in China. Well, Mickey Mouse, you know, it could have been real, could have been fake. I wouldn't have known back then, but it was just, there was loads of stuff available. I'm going, well, wait a sec, anime stuff, it's sort of big in America, it's getting bigger in the UK. Uh, let's just, you know, I said to my cousin who was in the UK, I said, mate, here you go. Here's a bunch of like goodies, chuck that shit to you in the post. You know, we try and sell that. And that's how it was. It was a, and it was much more of a business to business name. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the gashapons. Exactly right, yeah, the yeah. gashapons, which was available in Hong, you know, in China. Yeah, but it's expensive in UK and it's very yeah. rare to get hold of as well. So exactly right. The whole import exporting. Thing. This is back in 2003 when that yeah. wasn't really, uh, it wasn't too available. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got, we got French Bulldog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's out. Yeah, yeah Leo's here. He's, uh, he, can hear, he, can hear, he can hear you boys. He's like, it's a strange, you know, them boys sound like they're from where my... Uh, where my uh, owner is from, but they're not in jail. Isn't that strange? <laughs> from Edgeware, but they've been hit. They're not talking. Uh, you ain't talking from a prison cell, are you? It could be. The way you yeah. it, it looks, looks like, like it looks like a busy uh, room, doesn't it? Yeah. But, uh, that's some voices. You know, that's, that's, what, like, that's what we were talking about before. Is uh, when uh, Alex contacted me on um, on Facebook and we were chatting away, and uh, basically we we realised that where I am now is uh, like five, 10 minutes away from where Alex actually grew up as well. Maybe how fast you drive, because you ride the sirens, but it's about 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, and we actually were, the time we were talking about, oh yeah, did, uh, did you used to go and meet on the Edgeware wall? And we're like, yeah, we used to go Edgeware wall. We used to go like, yeah, we'll meet there. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was just really funny to, you know, start talking about 
uh, figures and statues and then all of a sudden realizing, hang on a minute, we grew up in exactly the same area. It's just like such a small world. Madness, isn't it? And, and, and anybody, anybody in this room that's from those areas will tell you we're probably the only three people from them areas that actually collect statues or have anything to do with it. So you, you're going to get, get knifed talking this way. <laughs> I don't know, there was a guy in, um, there was a guy in uh, Abbott's Road who actually um, tried to, no, actually not, uh, Blundell Road. Do you know where James, James used to live? Mm. Uh, there was a guy down there who tried to buy something off me. He was like, do you want to meet up? And I'm like, no. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> <You> get robbed. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, the thing is, I've got, to, I've got to commend you, gentlemen. I mean, the stuff that you're putting up online at the moment, factory-wise, the, the sneak peeks, the, the, the inside looks that we're getting at the moment is absolutely unbelievable, man. I really would. I think you're the, the first company that's going out of your way to really show some of the behind the scenes stuff that we really desperately in this industry is looking to see. I mean, we love all that sort of stuff. I mean, Jesus, I can't tell you how many, how many videos of uh, people in warehouses frying around statue boxes interests me. I don't know why it interests <laughs> me, but it does just seeing what goes on behind them doors. So, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. congratulations. Package, package that's just, a really great idea. Oh, the appreciate that. You know, discussing that in terms of one of our, um, you know, a statue is a, you know, a statue company, you know, the, the game has risen so much that it's the, that it's become quite easy to sort of enter the market. Um, and a lot of the factories are being used by different people as well. Uh, you know, you, you, you talk about all the different guys, we see all the stuff everywhere. I mean, you, you just will, it's, there's only a select few factories that can actually do what we need at that level. So one of the differentiating things that we thought that we could do was just be more open. And, you know, part of that is, you know, Chuck Horse has come on board um, in the last, man, it feels like it's been a long time, but it's only been, it's just coming up to a year, not even a year, not even a year nine months. Something like that, yeah. With a specific, you know, because he, you know, Chuck, you can talk a bit about, you know, about the Collectors Club and how that sort of... Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, what, like, uh, it's like, as you guys know, you guys have been collecting for a while. We've been, I, I, I collect stuff as well. I mean, I started off with like small figures and moving on to a six scale and then eventually to statues as well. And like, as a collector, when you pre-order something or, or, or purchase something, that's it. You don't know what's, what's going to happen for the next a year. And it's nice to know, to, 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 to understand the whole process from, from, from actually placing the order, how, how things are made from 2D to 3D to print, all the way through the production. And to actually talk to the creator, to, to, to the actual teams, or even the artists, just to see the whole process, how many, how many fingers actually touch the pie, to, to create the pie. And as a collector, it's been nice to know, to, to, to hear the updates every so often. Mm. It could be once or twice every month or whatever, but we like to do it every day. Every so it day. feels like, it feels like yeah. we're actually talking to the customers and not just like taking the money in and run off and then, there you go, I'll see you one year later, here's your product. Well, so, there, are, there are companies that have got about, I think there's a company that has $5,000 of my money. And um, one of the pieces I ordered from them, um, from the day I ordered to the day I got it, was um, two years and eight months. Wow. And it was meant to be uh, delivered in a year. I mean, the, yeah, the but whole, that, that, this, industry, this whole hobby is all about waiting, being patient. But, you know, when you get to a certain point, there's, there's enough... Yeah, you know, there's only so much waiting you can do. Well, I mean, well, first of all, for that two years and eight months, were you kept informed along the way? Well, that's what I was about to say. The problem with, I'm not going to name companies, but the company that I'm talking about, the problem I have with, with them is their communication. And the problem I have with them is the fact that they use uh, the statue forum to actually tell people what's going on. I, I don't use statue forum. I know a lot of people who don't use statue forum. I know a lot of people who don't use Facebook. Um, they've got a facility in place where they send you uh, weekly uh, newsletters, and they they need they need to include that on the newsletter at least to say this is your update. You know, you yeah. you have this on order. We have a record of everyone who's ordered that. There's only I don't know 500 pieces of it or whatever, a thousand pieces. So to have a they're going to have a database for when they say to people. This is now ready for shipping. They're going to send an automated generated email for that. So it's easy for them to just send that email to everyone to say, sorry guys, latest update, had issues with the paint, here's some pictures, apologize, expected another six months. That's what they need to do. And I would have been like, yeah, all right. I, I, that's what 
but that's that's exactly my point at this at this point in time this junction that we're at really collecting wise you know i think transparency now is needed more than ever and it seems that there are certain companies out there you know um alex may not name some names but i don't give a fuck so um pop culture shock and um arh uh, you know are two of them that really need to step up that part of it and i think they sh i think anybody you know should really take a good look at what you lot are doing because to be honest with you as well, I've got to give a big shout out to our boy Neo Dragon here as well, because he's somebody that's been, he's been singing your praises for a very, very long time. Um, Alex, he's been saying it? about your fighters, Alex, yeah, about yeah. your quality and the stuff that you're putting out. And, um, you know, I know he'll be thrilled to see this video and stuff like that. You know, he's he's big advocate for your company, you know, and um, I Alex, think that's what's you... needed. I think. Oh, wait, wait, is, is Neo Dragon Alex Pinter or Alex? P P I T U L A. I'm... It's oh, Alex. okay. That, I didn't know See, that. Look, they, but All they right. even know it's their company, and they even no. know who it is. But I knew. I, so yeah, I knew, I knew, I knew that, Neo Dragon's name done. was Alex, and I know this other guy, Alex. But I didn't know it was the same I, person. I, 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 that makes <laughs> sense now because now I know who that is. Okay. Yeah, we but don't you know what? I, I, names, and it's hard to connect them, connect them to the YouTube name. Yeah. But once you do, because you see the videos, then you make the connection. But otherwise, but mainly it's the Facebook name. But so go, go ahead, Gio. No, no, no. I, 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 I just think it's. I think it's magn I think it's magnificent. I think it's the way it. Sh it's the way, for me, at, at this point in time in my collection, collecting life, I will only buy, and invest in companies that I trust. I, I'm, I'm talking about transparency in things. I, um, you know, the dark side thing that happened with Sideshow, that the, the premium, that that stopped me buying direct from them after that happened because, I, what they said happened, and what I know from sources what really happened and just the whole dance and the merry-go-round of it I found it very very distasteful and I find transparency and trust when you're handing over your money in advance to somebody you know what I mean I, I think that you reward that I think you you as a company are one of the few that reward that type of trust I mean XM Studios put a lot of details up on Facebook a lot of details up all over the place of what they're doing and stuff like that too but I think you you take it to another level and I, I would feel comfortable that if my money was in your company, what's my money pay? What's happening? Do you know what I mean? Like a bank does every month. They say, look, it's, this is where your money is. This is, you know, this is how you're doing. This is what's going on. And I think that the way you do it is uh, it should be commended, gentlemen. So really, uh, thanks very much. Really appreciate it. There's a couple of things I want to add to that. The first thing is what, um, you know, you said XM as an example. Um, there is two differences between a Facebook page and a Facebook group. A Facebook page is very one directional and you can give your information absolutely no problem and get your message out, the message that you want to get out. The group is completely far more our focus than the Facebook page. We don't care about the Facebook page. Or we do, of course, but you know. Yeah. But for us, the only thing, the main thing that we're, we're, we're focusing on is that collector's group because that is a two-way communication. Once you have two-way communication, that's how you build the trust. It's far more important to do that, yes. to be able to be held accountable to the guys that you're selling to. And again, this is the reason why, you know, to have chocks on board and to see this explosion in that group is simply, you know, it was for me, it was recognized that we needed to have that group. And the fact that I met chocks through that group and you know what chocks has been able to do to increase those numbers in a sustainable way, because of course, once you bring them in, you've still got to, you yeah. can't just go off. You've still got yeah. to bring, bring, them, bring, them, bring them in is easy, right? It's just like, yeah. hey, come check us out and all that stuff. But to actually have a long-term relationship, because this is a long game, right? We are, we're all like, we all going through this whole process together from beginning, from, from, from placing a pre-order and say, hey, we took your money. Hey, this is what we're going to do tomorrow. We're going to do the day after. Here's your product, product et cetera. So actually, yeah. before we even have the Facebook uh, the page and, and the club, you, uh, you actually had a forum back in the day. Uh, yeah, but it was kind of like really restricted. The way I yeah. see forums, like it, it might have worked 10, 10, like 10 years ago, yeah. forums, but yeah. Yeah. eventually people want like instant feedback, instant oh, reaction. Yeah. And like you can have your sounds, you can have your videos, you can have your pictures, you can have like multiple groups of people coming in like worldwide. You know, yeah. like, even if it's like uh, if they don't speak the lingo, they can still appreciate the image, the, the actual product, the statue. And having that whole interaction with like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter all combined mm. it just powerful. makes it yeah it's really powerful the, the, the social media platform. Yeah, I, agree. I don't even know how this company could be working 
you without yeah. social media. Like honestly, it, right. it would have been like you, you, you especially you know how any company did, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Look at it, yeah. Yeah. How did you yeah. used to do it? Yeah. 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 I said, you, you know, you look at things now where we are and social media is so important. You think how in 10 years ago, how, the, how did anybody get anything done? You, you know what? I mean, as, you know, as I said, this company is not, it, it seems like, like it's like no one really knows. I feel like no one, not too many people know about us, right? Um, but the reality is, is we've been around for well, you know, quite a long time. We've seen yeah. the rise hey, you've been, of many you've been around since the, You've been around the same time time as Sideshow, correct? You've been about uh, the same sort of time as well. You're like had just sort of started getting their feet under them with the Wetter line. So, you know, their conjunction yeah. with the Wetter line yeah. and the yeah. Lord of the Rings stuff. So well, you mean, so George, when you say Sideshow, Sideshow has actually been around for about 25 years, but 10 years ago is when, uh, sorry, 2005 is when they actually started on their premium format line. So that's right. more what George is talking about, I think. But yeah, um, right. sorry, I'm it just was Lord of the Rings that really sort of took them to the next level, you know, my understanding. Yeah, well, Marvel they, as well. Yeah, it's, yeah, Marvel and, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh no, I knew them before um, they had Marvel. So before they had Marvel, so it was in the yeah, game. They yeah, Marvel, the, so. the they uh, they started. They had an agreement, didn't they, with where they started uh, distributing exactly. for where, wasn't it? Working exactly. alongside them, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, you know, absolutely. I mean, I, I know what about um, That's actually their first. That's that one there. The uh, Logan is their first premium format uh, right. figure they did. Um, that one, and then Doctor Doom, I think it was, which is quite different in scale um, in quality. Sitting but, down, yeah. Surely was not their second one. Sorry. The sitting down Doctor Doom or was that a different one you're talking about? The sitting down Doctor Doom was their yeah. first uh, Marvel villain, premium yeah. format villain, and then this is the first premium format Marvel statue. Okay. All right. I think that's right. 2006, is it not, Alex? 2005? Five, five or six. I think it was... Yeah. It might be five, yeah. because Doom was first, and uh, uh, Green Goblin came out in 2005 or six as well. So it, it's basically, I think them two came out around the same time, but then I think Doom was in hand first. I think Omar right. was telling me about it. So and, uh, going back to your original point... Sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, you go, yeah, you go. Um, going back to your original point, um, or your original question, into, you know, we've been around for a while and we still feel that no one knows about us. But what I would say is it was amazing to see that having just sort of producing the product, getting it out, producing the product, getting it out, whatever, just sort of like very much blinders on and being very quite faceless. The company is very faceless. It's the first to figure, you know, who the hell are they? No one knows who they are. Yeah. To make that active decision to come to the front of the company and say, this is who we are. You know, this is who F4F is. Really came about with this collectors group, and that started on the 9th or the 8th of January last year, and it was the most <clears throat> proud thing to see. So many people joining it and posting these amazing collections that they've been collecting the works that we've been putting out for years, and it yeah, felt yeah. really proud to see them. Because you know, I see one product and I ship it off, right? Next, all right, so the next in the Sonic line, okay, next, okay, so next in the Zelda line, whatever, okay, it's one product, and then it, off it goes. Yeah, I see, like, 500 of them at one time, and then they all go, but then to see them all together and go, hey, damn, that looks sweet, and that's really rewarding. So, it, clearly, yes. people have managed to collect it over the years, and it was great to see that. Um, yeah, yes. because, like, before, before this Facebook platform, I mean, I knew about First World Figures back in the UK, because uh, I was a big like Sega and Nintendo fan as well, and obviously I was searching for merchandise. And back in the day, as a student, you couldn't really afford a lot of products, but you still keep tabs on it. And then obviously I moved into Hong Kong, started working, just doing my own thing. And then all of a sudden I saw you posting stuff on on Facebook, and it said from you know it tells you the locations from Hong Kong. I was like, what the hell? Are you in Hong Kong? Because I always thought first of figures was a UK company. So I hit you up, right? And mm -hmm. I say, hey, you from Hong Kong? And he goes, yeah. And he was like. Are you from Yunlong? That comes on road, right? And I was like, what the hell? We just live next door to each other. Like, literally. literally like, <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, and then you say, hey, you know, let's go out for a meal or come to the office and have a little quick chit chat and stuff. And it's like, oh wow, it's like actually seeing all the items you know, behind the glass cabinet is like, you know, it's a totally different feeling. Because like back in the day, there was, you know, I, I, I was not even in the forum. I had no idea first of figures at the forum. All I thought was like, okay, just pre order, buy it, and that was it. There was no, like back in the day, back in, uh, back in the day, the internet was like really shit. Mm. Like, no, like oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, 56. I was 28.8, mate. 56, mate. So like, you know, like, 
to, to see everything now, having a Facebook page, everything, everyone coming together and seeing like those products that I saw back in uni, like 10 years ago, is, is totally, it, it gives off this totally different feeling. And it's like, it's surprised that a lot of people, newcomers are, are just starting to join First for Figures with Okami and Artorius. So yes. it's big, massive. Yeah. yeah, and that's a testament to the fact that for many years we were just maybe just Nintendo and Sega. Yeah. And then as you know, you know, you talked about the fact that we've been around for so long. Mm. And what's funny is those that knew about us when they were at, in the college days or high school guys, uh, it's now been 10 years since we've yeah, released our yeah. first Nintendo product. Well, there, and they're still up now going, now we can afford it. I'm like, that's oh, okay, that makes me feel no, well, there's, there's pieces from uh, 2007 that never got made. And um, the funny thing is, is uh, uh, Prime 1 are actually making the uh, Transformers Primal line. But you did a Transformers Primal bust in 2007. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Maybe so earlier. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah I remember seeing, I, I think you sent me a picture of it at a toy show. Right. And uh, one of the other things I really, actually one of my um, sort of favorite pieces that never got made is I love the Baroness with Ravage. I think that's such a good piece. And, um, you know, you, you started the line off. Sorry? Ahead of our time. <laughs> yeah, you started the line off. And I think you did the um, Optimus Prime uh, with um, Storm Shadow. Uh, you did that one where he's on, on top of the head. But then uh, there was also the Optimus Prime um, with uh, Snake Eyes in the hand. Did that one get made? I don't think that one got made. Uh, no, it didn't. It didn't. That whole and then. Uh, Oh no! I thought, oh, so the prime uh, storm shadow never that got made or not? The the, the storm shadow yeah. one did, but not so, the yeah. one with the big boss. And that was actually made by Ultaton, if you remember that. Um, yeah. Who does a bunch of stuff for uh, Hollywood Collector Group, but he did stuff for loads of people. Um, mm. But that was that was back when I was that was there was a clear. I can remember very clearly going, "What the hell is this rapid prototyping thing?" Back yeah. in two thousand and like four, two thousand and five, and sort of went that direction 2005 so all that sort yeah. of uh all that sort of stuff that people use now or take for granted now was really primitive back in the day but m all of our stuff into from 2005 onwards has all been that that method and of course now it's it, you know it's it's next level now you know you can just have the craziest amount of detail everyone used to say oh making stuff in 3d everything looks so lifeless there's no feeling there's no texture in there it looks so clean and smooth they don't say that anymore because no, technology no. has now come up to the point where you can have the most accurately detailed things in the stitching and anything, any of the sort of textures can just, you know, be replicated pretty, pretty amazingly now. So it, it can only be, it can only propel statue um, manufacturers to make better and better pieces in the, you know, as the years come. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, yeah, even in the last um, year, that's, that's, that's evolved so much we've seen that with so many companies where um seeing that 3d uh they may put they put out a few items which have been really good uh and then you know people have thought they were great <laughs> and then all of a sudden they're releasing the stuff now and it's like wow that you know that looks really really good because it used to be there's there's always a debate about traditional versus uh digital there's always going to be that and people say that there's um kind of like a nice uh, feel about the traditional pieces, but now oh, I think that's... Print, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but now that's, now that's not really uh, relevant. That and, uh, goes down. <laughs> but with that in mind, um, do you think that in the future, um, that's going to damage the industry? Because in the future, potentially when technology comes down, prices get lower and lower, people could just then buy a 3D file send it to their printer and print the 3D image themselves. And that Absolutely. might be the future of, of whatever. And uh, with that in mind, there's no way of, uh, you know, controlling that. Because uh, you could go, I could say to George, all right, I've got, I've got this uh, first figures piece. I've got, I've got five files. What ones you got? Oh yeah, I'll send you all five of them if you send me that one. And then he's got those statues now. He's just going to press a print button and, you know, so that, that may be in the future, it may really yeah, ruin absolutely. the... I, I absolutely agree with you. That is definitely something that it's working towards. It's probably about 10 years away, I would say, to that put to the point where the 3D printers come out. Not only does it just come out, but it's got to be painted. That's the, that's the bit that we've got to do as well. Yeah. I know they do them painted now, but it's kind of rough. It's Z Corp printers, all that sort of stuff. And it's, and it's got to get to that price where it's cheaper to do it 
or you know it's probably cheaper or maybe even significant well you know at least to be in line if not slightly cheaper than it would be to actually buy the product and recognizing that recognizing that is what it's all about what i mean by that is even now that you know obviously we're big fans of rad titan we're in the groups just as much as we're in our own we're seeing what's obviously keeping an eye on what's happening out there so Spice. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes beyond just looking at our direct legitimate competitors. Look at yeah. all the commissions that you see. Because yeah. the barrier to entry is so low, because all you need to do is have a great 3D sculpt now, yeah. which so many good 3D sculpts can be made by through technology. So how to say, you need an amazing traditional artist to get to some level. And without taking anything away from, 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 from 3D guys, yeah, the yeah. difficulty to get to that same level of a traditional sculptor is way easier because you can have tutorials, you can have, you can just flip that file over to someone to help you tweak it, flip it back. You can, it's so easy to get to that sweet level. Yeah, well, with, with, with uh, big companies like Sideshow, uh, for example, they'll, they'll have a file which one person will work on the body, one yeah, person sure. will work on the hand, one person will work on the face, one person will work on the add-ons. And then they'll combine it and do have those people who their speciality is to do those different parts. And then it'll be about like a Frankenstein of all their, all yeah. their skills. Uh, but as you say, with traditional, it's not as simple as just, you know, I'm going to sculpt the head that. and we'll stick that head on top of that right. body. And exactly right. so go on, go on, Alex. Sure, no, right. no, I was going to say the thing that the thing is, is that you, what we, we definitely don't want to see is we don't want to lose the genius because that's what's for me this is what this, this is all about you know it, i think you know when i sit back and i look at my pieces i i think to myself i i, I see the work and i just think geez, you know the the, ma the man that created this or the team that made this uh, an incredibly you know town when i was a kid you know and i would sit in art and the, you know the teacher would show you know there's just a, there's a there's a skill there's a, there's a, I think with the 3D printing and, and, and the, you know, you can get the file and you can do this and you can do that. I think as long as we keep promoting the fact that the people that put those details on that file, that create those textures, create that genius, as long as they're valued and they're up and just, we don't just lose them. You know what I mean? We've got to just make sure that we protect that skill going forward. No matter how great the technology goes, there is, you know, the, the artist has to do the work. You know what I mean? First, and that's that's what we have got to try and keep going forward. Yeah, and, and I appreciate that from your point of view. But we're talking about us and surviving. We're in survival yeah. mode right now. Okay, I don't care about what you're thinking about. Your artistic appreciation. I'm just trying to really put food on my plate, right? So, so going back from our point of view, so that's all very nice what you said. That's nice, Nixon. That's nice. But from our point of view, right? You're, you're, the, you're the you're the genius. I'm talking about you. No, 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 that's not, the, no, that's not the case. The 3D guy can be genius and simply give you the file. That's the point. The 3D guy can be the genius. Yeah, right? we've got, we got to try and protect from that, man. God, well, what else? Uh, from that yeah. so, so this is the important thing. This is the important thing. It's to go beyond just having a, here's a figure. And here is a here is a figure done. It's creating that experience. The first of figures experience is all about getting your hands dirty, going into the groups, do, you know, getting involved with that. It's creating a brand. You don't buy you don't you don't buy a replica of the Mona Lisa and think you've got the Mona Lisa. Yeah. You're buying the brand and the whole thing that comes with it, with the packaging, with the authenticity thing. You know, you don't get that with simply um, just printing out your own one. And that's, yeah. the diff that's the only thing that we can differentiate ourselves at the point where technology is absolutely parallel with what we make. What yeah, is the differentiating thing is that is then, trying to create a brand. And that is what we're doing now and trying to establish now. My boy Chops yeah. here is, you know, spearheading that to help get us to that point where, you know, first of all, it becomes more recognizable. It's... And it's part of that experience. So when that time comes in 10 years time, it comes in 10 years time, we're ready for it. It's a long road that we know we've got to start that journey now. But then what yeah. about, sorry, just, just leading on from that, I'll come back to the, your group in a minute because uh, we were talking about that the other day, but- um, This is a massive 
talking about group though, isn't it? It's just like no, seventeen thousand people. It, it is. But talk, talking about the, um, uh, I just want to go into recasting because at the moment there's a big thing about recasting. Uh, there's the, the big companies where. Uh, they're taking some of the products and it's not necessarily a recast it's all, sometimes it's just it's the same Chinese factory that just produced another hundred of them and reselling them because there's no um, you know no control over it once that factory has it sometimes um, but there's also the side of recasting which um, makes oh, it doesn't make me laugh but it's a bit like um, when you get because you get the recast of the big companies and licensed products, and I do feel sorry for that. But then also you get the recasts of um, when people are unlicensed, and it's a bit like there is a difference. But still, it's I know all the artwork has been art, artists have done a lot, a lot of work to do, to put that in place. But um, but how do you feel about you know the increase of, sort of the recasting going on in the in the industry? Is you know, again, this this is an example of problems that are, you know, those are current problems of the problems that we were just discussing that's going to be happening in the sense that you, if we if we make the assumption that you just print a button and out comes your statue, well, that's a problem for 10 years time. Recast is a problem for now, but it's the same principle. You can only yeah. differentiate yourself by, yes. if you're making a, the assumption that the recasts are not recast, but actually extras, so therefore the quality is the same, then all you can do is just hope that the collector themselves wants to collect a genuine product yeah. and what comes and cuts. And that's, and that all comes down to branding. Mm. Jocks? I mean, yeah, like uh, as a collector myself, you know, I'll, I'll, I don't want to collect any fakes or, you know, or, there any, you go. or any copies. You, you want the, sure. the genuine thing. And, you know, to, 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 to make sure that you're actually buying the genuine thing, you, you're not just buying the product itself, you're buying the, 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 the pre-service or the post-service. It's the whole package. I mean, sure, I mean, there's going to be fakes out there no matter what. All we could do is try and prevent that as much as we can and just just by not being popular then no one yeah. really no, but as in like ed educate, educate. <laughs> just, yeah. just, with the, okay. um, there's also the way where you know you you do it and other companies do it as well where uh you get the um authenticity cards and you can register your product uh and then you get the points I for registering that. so that, that's, that's that. a good uh, process to have as well so you kind of you have that in place so that people can check whether it's genuine oh you also Love the fact that when we did the amateur asu, we did that review. You know what I mean? And it's a it's beautifully clean, lovely piece. But you know, there's a there's a warm feeling you get when you when you open it and you see this, you know, that it like a stick that's on it that basically says, This particular person, check this item. It makes you think all of it, because if that was me, if that was my name on that bloody on that box, mm. you know, I would I would be taking particular care to make sure that I didn't get a phone call going, George, you know, what the fuck you've been up to, man? You come to work drunk again. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's it goes beyond that. It's actually a, a hit in the paycheck. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a brilliant idea and it's a, it gives you a great confidence, you know, when you're opening the piece. I've never seen it before. So I was a yeah, really nice touch. Sure the generic QC stuff and anyone could slap a QC stuff and walk away. If you actually, it's not just print your name, it's you actually <laughs> got to sign it and you take over. Sign it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no it's one's really perfect. Idea. There's human errors. So, you know, yeah. if things happen, you know, shit happens. I mean, that's life, right? But we always have something to, you know, trace back. Yeah, of course. And then, and then take it from there on. Yeah. And, and you know, if it's a latent defect, i.e. it's something with the engineering and it arrives broken, uh, no problem. I don't, you know, I don't ever, that, I can never forward that. But if it's something like, hey, it looks like it's been painted incorrectly or, you know, whatever. Um, I, I need to review what was our QC, you know, it helps review our QC process. You know, what was it that we could have done differently? Yeah. How could we have trained our staff to make sure that, hey, these are the important points. These are the places that it's likely to kind of have issues. Make sure you, you know, obviously you do the general check, but particular highlights need to be done on these sort of areas. If I've like written that down out and that, that's all clear and it still arrives to the customer and, then, and it still has this issue, then yeah. And whoever's got that QC sticker is going to have some issues. <laughs> Step into my <laughs> office. <laughs> I think the, um, I, you know, the video is going to go up now anyway. I mean, this, this, this video will be up after we film it. But the, uh, the video you sent us uh, yesterday of the, uh, the assembly line, um, I think that, you know, I love to see those, those videos. Uh, you, you guys put those out quite regularly. Uh, and I think if your factory sent them to you, I think, you know, there's no uh, effort to kind of post them for other people to see. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, 
I, I, I get really excited about seeing those ones. And I mean, you sent me the one yesterday, I think it was 16, 17 minutes long. Yeah. I watched the whole thing and I watched you talking along the process, uh, running it down. I'm even wearing my, uh, my Link t-shirt today just to, uh, nice. to contribute it. Um, I've, got I just to ask think, you. I've got to ask you a question. I have to do it. So out of the pieces, or I want you to tell me what piece that you've currently made you, you the most proud of? That you really, you really think, gee, you know, there's a moment you just think, wow, we, we fucking really, really excel. I mean, that is an exceptional piece. And I want to know what piece in the future you're most excited about or one of the projects you can hint towards. And then the third and final thing I want to know is, is if there was any piece that's made on this day that is existent, I would want to know what you wish you'd made for many time. Um, would you like my inside leg measurement as well? <laughs> yeah, go, on, go on, man. My, bread, my, my bread's fired that way. I can play that game. <laughs> can we do one at a time, George? I can't even remember all that shit. Um, okay, the first one was what are the ones that we're most proud of? Um, I've got that you've released currently. Yeah, I would say probably the most, um, you know, I would, I, I, I probably got to say, I'm really proud of Simon Belmont um, because it had so many different parts to it. I mean, it was one of the first ones because we've been known for doing these sort of Nintendo Sega stuff, which is very, very kind of cutesy, I would say. It's a bit more simplistic in design. Mm -hmm. Well, not some of them are, are more complicated, but there are some pieces that you wouldn't say it's particularly too textured, more like the sort of traditional, yeah. more technical thing. So I would call it a bit more hardcore, right? Now that Simon Belmont for me was quite a, quite a piece to kind of showcase that we can do that. I and, love that piece. You know, that whip was just, a, no offense, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I will, <laughs> was genius to have this kind of bent <laughs> whip. Like that. Pose it how you want to, you know, avoid all the breakages. It also allows you to pose it how you want to pose it. Uh, you know, for me, that was pretty, you know, pretty amazing to be able to do that. And it led from that experience, led into the most recent version of that, of course, is Artorius and have the, the kind of ability to design Artorius and lead into production. And, um, you know, quite a lot of the, uh, the very, comments yeah. has been very positive, what, you know, in a very short term. I mean, that Artorius one is uh, from Dark Souls, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I saw the exclusive, the details on the sword is like some of the de I mean, that piece is like 24 inches tall. It's a stunning, stunning piece. I, I, I uh, you know, I, I, I watched that and I was, cause I, I actually don't know the game cause I don't, I don't play the game, but I'm, it's one of the pieces I saw. I'm like, I have to play this fucking game. You know, that's a, that's a badass character. I need to play this game. The most, the biggest compliment I could ever think of is the fact that someone in our group buys one of our products simply because it's us and they trust us and they don't know the license. They just yeah. buy it because it looks cool and they trust us that it's going to be a cool piece. Yeah, and, that is will be there. Yeah. The, yeah, and that is the, the biggest comment. I haven't seen it that much, <laughs> but you know when it happens. <laughs> so what, 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 what made you come about with that, that finger, finger art -y thing? <laughs> What's that? What, 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 what made you come up with the, you know, the hashtag finger Oh, that wasn't even us. It wasn't even us. It was, oh, okay. it was, a, it was, a, it was actually a, a club member. Basically, the, yeah. the club member, uh, Jeff, our, uh, you know, our sales guy, he actually went to, to you know, Singapore. Singapore for a show. Isn't the and same one that, you know, Alex went to. <laughs> yeah, actually, you guys were there as well. Alex went to it. Yeah, Alex went oh, to yeah. it. So, yes, and uh, one of the fan club members actually bump into Jeff and say, hey, my name is Cham or something like that. Chester. Chester, Chester Tam, yeah. Chester Tam, yeah. yeah. So uh, they, they met, they chat. He he was excited because he pre-ordered Sip as well and, and Artorius. And as soon as he got in in, in, in in his hand, he posted it immediately and just 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 played off. He just went, wait, what? Wait, 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 oh, it's hollow. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's all about you know, being hollow and stuff. He just put the fingers in, 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 in his face and then it, it just started up a trend. And yeah. uh, I love gamers. It was like gamers. Gamers are great. I mean, um, you know, they, they've, they've been brought up playing games, collecting collector's edition, and to yeah. see them moving to resin statues. Because, you know, guys, I mean, like, the, the hobby is quite small. It's quite, you know, like, uh, quite niche. And uh, you, we know that, you know, things can be quite saturated. But to actually bring in new members, new anime guys, new gamers, that they've never actually uh, seen a resin product before, 
and to actually see these new blood coming in. Mm. And, and it's so exciting to, to, to see that transition from a gamer collecting maybe 100, 200 buck collector's edition, moving into like, you know, a little bit more expensive statues, but to realize that whole PVC and resin is totally a it's whole, a whole yeah. new ball game. Yeah. Yeah. I, saw, yeah, I saw a post about that where you were saying that, you know, when they do the limited edition games and they give you the figures with the games, that that was a great, uh, way for you guys to get into it as well because you know they, people, are, people are buying these limited edition games they get this piece with that and then you're kind of well you are the, a step up from that you know so then people can take that further if that's what they want to do I mean, I really, the yeah. thing is they actually have that piece there in the first place that they connected with the games yeah from, from the that's display. right have it on there to then think wait a sec i want more for this display you don't just start with the resin you start with your smaller game collecting ones and then you go hey what else is out there? Oh, what's this one? And then yeah. that, that, that yeah, moment definitely, definitely yeah. opens the door, doesn't it? But we uh, all have, as collectors, we all have that inside of us that we, when we like something, we want to try and show that we support it by getting those things of being like, you know, I'm going to pre-order the collector's edition. I want the statue and I want the download codes and I want this and I want that. And, and, and I mean, we do that. It's just, it's sort of ingrained. When you're a collector, you, you, you I think you, you've always been that way. Mm -hmm for kids it was it was cards you know street fighter cards you know the foil cards do you remember you had the like yeah, you know yeah. I mean, you, we should go into school and trade that shit and like walk in and you'd have your vega and you'd have all this and you'd be like yeah you know we, we, we it starts there and then it starts with figures like and toys and other things you just want to keep forever you know what well, i mean also, you have like, moves um, all the way through it you like you get this completely like well there are people who have the completest thing where you know, you just have to collect all of these pieces for it. But also, it comes down to like the games, like you know, the Batman games, where uh, you see the percentage, and you have to get you have to get 100. percent yeah, have to get 100. Percent. Now, I back in the day, that was yeah. okay. But now, that's that's like that's like 200 hours of your life, bitch. That's fucking <laughs> serious. Yeah. Well, I just um, I just cleared Witcher, uh, Witcher three, and um, <clears throat> it took me about probably about 100 100 hours, and um, the ending's terrible. No spoiler alert, I'm not going to say what happened. Don't the end, spoil, I got, I listened to all this shit last night. Yeah, and, it's about well his and the film, funny thing as well is um, Prime One are making the pieces for this and they look great. And they mm. chose to make this toad. I don't know if you played the game, but they chose to make this toad. And I'm like, I got to the boss, he was hard. I beat him and I'm like, it was a hard boss, but I don't know why they made it. And then I get to this other boss like uh, the other day and just called the caretaker. And it looks like something from Silent Hill. And I was like, why the fuck didn't you make that? It was like, it's like a Grim Reaper, no face. He's got like a, uh, a cape on. And I'm like, that's like the most badass character in this whole game. And you didn't make that. What, what's wrong with you people? You're making a frog. But anyway, uh, um, but that leads, that leads me quite nicely. Is you might have licensing reasons. There might be, sometimes yeah. it might be where a particular character is dear to the creator's heart. Uh, or, yeah. You know, maybe something like that, that you do it, Sometimes, you know, we, you know, without saying which ones they are, but there are definitely ones that we, <laughs> we, we've made. What? Well, yeah. Because I do know, I, I do know, um, I, I think Pop Culture Shock is, um, they say that the one that they have most difficulty with, with Capcom is Blanca. I believe that's what they say, that the guy yeah, who's in charge the, of Capcom uh, at the moment is his favourite character. And they, like, keep sending like whatever it is the proposals what they've tried for like, i don't know 10 years and they keep knocking it's the back I think it's the licensing guy the licensing guy's favorite character is blanca so he keeps refusing it um but this was kind of leading on to i think you did a teaser the other week for silent hill didn't you i know it wasn't a teaser so when you talk about temptation Thursday, well basically yeah it's not it's it's not really a teaser so it's a, so obviously uh, it's something that we do every thursday in the club where we like uh, give the club members a, a, we create a poll basically called Temptation Thursdays, and basically we 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 ask the club members uh, what character or unknown character or less popular character you would like us to make if we decide to yeah. make that. So we sort of like, hey, this uh, this week we might want to do uh, I don't know. We started with Rise Star, which yeah, is like yes. this. The very first poll was a Rise Star, it's an old classic Mega Drive game. It's shaped like a star, and then we just put that up and say, hey, if we had a pre-order tomorrow, would you buy it? A simple yes or no. And then obviously yeah. we'll look at that, look at the trend over the, you know, it might be not this year, maybe next year we'll go back to the poll, look at the trend, see how many votes. And, you know, it's, it's, it's fun because once we gather all these information, the future's, you it's know. Power. Yeah, Massive. Yeah. 
information. We don't know what the future holds. Key. I mean, but do you not find it a little bit risky that um, you know people say to you? I mean, I hear it a lot. You know, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe in your group you've got some nice people. You got some good people. But Facebook, for example, you don't know how many people I hear saying, you know, change this and I'm in and then you know what I mean it happens or make this character and I'll buy it and then the character gets made and there's no issue and then they're just like they don't buy it a lot of people put their name to these things like yeah make me an Omega Red uh, you know and I'll, I'll buy it and it's like okay well this here's one no I don't no no I, yeah I ain't got any money at the minute it's just like it's not <laughs> gonna work that way dude you know what I mean do you not do you, do you worry about that or do you find that your core group is that they're just what they're a good you know group that that genuinely will i mean it's a bit different your prices are so reasonable they're so you know so good you know at the moment um you know i, I like i say what i've been watching some of your the reviews of your pieces and the prices um versus the quality that you're making is 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 exceptional and uh i really thought the moment that people are squeezing squeezing um the hobby away from a lot of people um you know, People regardless, get pressed out by certain whatever companies. reason. I mean, it's just got very a lot of things. Are, I mean, you know, pop culture shock are making more variants than they have done. Then they're adding like glow up flames and things. You got to pay extra for. You know, yeah. it, it. You know, we see all this. What I'm saying about the lack of transparency. You know, smart collectors can see when you're being squeezed, and um, I think your prices are. are exceptional for the stuff that you're actually producing. I think it's well when you uh, when you look at, for example, your uh, last pre-order was uh, Nightmare, wasn't it? Or it was one of the last ones. That's fucking Nightmare insane. Went up. That piece is uh, insane. Nightmare was um, $475. If wow. Nightmare was up with um, other companies in, in, the, uh, in, in the hobby uh, industry, whatever you want to say, uh, it would be you know, a 699 piece with uh, Easy. Easy. collectibles. Um, and they would come out and tell you how complicated <laughs> it is, and that's why it's that price. How do you, and you, know, work. Yes, yeah, you, work. you know, with, with all these price increases from other companies, uh, how do you still manage to maintain, you know, well, I don't want to know your, your whole business, but, you know, you still manage <laughs> to maintain that, you know, that price point, and you still manage to keep within that price point for, for, uh, for your customers. Okay, th there's a couple of reasons for why that's happened. And the first one, as well as I just wanted to point out, there is a regular version of Nightmare at $414, $415. Yeah. So to make the to make the um, to even make it even more accessible to collect the products is to you know even a step down from the four seven five for the exclusive to go down to four fifteen for the regular to make the price point a little bit even more accessible to people. Now <clears throat> there's a couple of couple of reasons um, on how we've managed to do that, and the first one is uh, we we are certainly a much bigger than we were before, but we were in a situation where we were only three people. It was my uh, my partner, John, myself, and Kanako for ourselves for many, many years, up until about a year and a half ago. And from a year and a half ago, we've gone from three people to 17, eight, including China stuff, like 17 people, maybe 18 people. Now, of course, that's incredibly scary, bearing in mind that that's massive overheads. And yes, now we have to deal with that. Um, the difference is th the difference is that it's grown in a way that it's it's matched the number of pieces that we've been able to sell because of the marketing that Chuckle Stars, because of the club, because of all of this. We do it, you know, Chuck, you want to talk about the open pre-order system, how we sort of do that. Yeah, because like, you know, back in the day where we, you know, we, we defined a number for a product. So it could be any product and then we set a number, but that's kind of like a double edged sword. Right, you could actually, if it does well, fine, you sell the whole lot in one go, right? Then that's it, nothing to worry about, just concentrate on the production. But what happens if that doesn't sell? It's just going to sit in the warehouse, it's going to, you know, take up warehouse space, that's going to cost a lot of money. But yes. over time, you know, you know, you learn things, and then, you know, we, the idea of going into the two week pre order is going to be like a timed exclusive. So you can pre order that product anytime during that two week up window. And that means that you're not going to lose out. Things are not going to sell out in 10 minutes after it comes to pre-order, yeah. right? So, you know, you can take your time during that two-week window. You can pre-order an exclusive version. How many we take, we make. <laughs> as simple as that. If we take in 1,000 orders, we will, we'll make 1,000. It's as simple as that. Everyone so gets you, a chance. So, Chuck, you're... Too but you're going by the numbers then yeah so you put that you put you put like a, like what mondo do with their prints certain prints they like put up and they're like right you have like i don't know 24 hours and however many orders you get that's how many will release so do you follow the same strategy with this 
open a deal. So you, yeah. however you get, that's the number you get. Exactly right. Yeah. Ah, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's that's great. Yeah. And you have well, to get that for everyone because because as a collector, I know how it feels like. Oh, you jump in there at five at, at twelve o'clock, and then all of a sudden you're, you're hammering that F five, and then all of a sudden yeah. it's all sold out. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 so so it, it's two things. First of all, you don't get that. You don't get that. Oh, look, it's sold out in five minutes, sort of mm -hmm. thing. But you might you might usually find that that's usually scalpers hoping to be able to sell it. Yeah. On yeah. later on. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's kind of come to an end now with. Um, uh, pop culture shock one of the what that, that was probably the biggest uh flippers market where people would go on pop culture shock couldn't handle the traffic uh their website would crash uh their stuff would sell out within their exclusive would sell out within like 20 minutes and then within an hour you would have that then yeah. posted on ebay or facebook to yeah. so double or triple the price and um, it was disgusting, very common. really now because because pop culture shock are business and they've increased all their numbers they're not selling out as quick yeah um we're just going back yeah. to sorry with uh with with your guys doing the the two-week thing i think that's a really good thing as well because again uh pop culture shock are very good that they announce the numbers i like that they announce it up front but then sideshow go yeah. the other way where they don't announce it up front but they don't give you a time frame of when they're going to announce it they no. just you you just kind of no you're just kind of waiting you're just waiting because some, you know it's, if you pre-order day we one, call it if window. you pre-order day one with Sideshow, uh, then the addition size is going to be a lot higher. So basically, oh, you massive, wait yeah. with Sideshow, you wait until right at the last minute when they announce it, and then you pre-order, and there'll be a lower addition size, and that's how you kind of do it. Um, that's like a mob mentality. How do you make sure that everybody pre-orders at the last moment after they announce it? <laughs> sure. I mean, that, that's the other thing as well. It's a solo hobby. It's not a team sport, is it? So I, 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 I you think, that, I think that's the, the big thing at the moment. I, I, I totally agree. I think the way that you're the way that you're doing that is very is very smart because it means that you're not getting unnecessary addition sizes. That's really what it means because what you're what we're seeing these days now is that Saito are going okay. Man, we're making an Aquaman premium format. Aquaman's a big character, right? He's this, that, and the other. We, and they, they pull, he comes out of fucking sky. And all of a sudden, you've got, I don't know how many, like maybe 5,000 or, I mean, it seems the average at the moment, you're getting five or 6,000 edition sizes, I mean, on things. And this, um, yeah, that with that comes, at, for me, I think sometimes it's not, uh, because not everybody agrees that the character is as popular as you may think it is. A, and more importantly, B, there's nothing worse. You do 5K and they're still up for sale. We know that they're still up for sale on Sideshow for a year, 18 months later. We know that it's not selling. The secondary market knows that. And then all of a sudden, they're going for a lot less than they're, they're worth or the value. I mean, it's, what about the, it's a very uh, dangerous game. Yeah. You're playing it in a very smart way. Well, one of the examples of that as well was the uh, the Batman behind me there. He um, he's 9, got about nine nine thousand edition size, right? Uh, I didn't order it day one. People who ordered it day one would have paid top money, would have paid for it through. Since then, Sideshow's offered free shipping, money off, everything under the sun. I ordered the exclusive on eBay for well under market value, and uh, because of the edition size. Sorry. Uh, you know, we know the factories that make it. We've seen how many they were making. Like, how yeah, many. Yeah, oh, I was ridiculous. It's crazy. Uh, and what you're saying crazy. about popularity as well is like we, the reason why we went for this two-week pre-order window is like, like you said, we don't know which characters. It might be popular in the games market. It, the games sell, but the actual character might not. So yeah, having exactly. this option, you know, it it, it doesn't tie right. us down. And yeah, then, about the price as well. I mean, we guys, we we know the industry really well. We know. How much is each one setting the prices? We know we know the cost, but you've got to consider that majority of our customers and, and members are gamers. They might not have a lot of income. So we're trying to it's not they don't have enough income, it's just they're not used to collecting this type of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously we try and push these prices down, which you know, as a collector myself, mm, how much would I pay? I'm not gonna pay like 750 bucks for a for a for a for a Sonic, you know, unless it's really elaborate. Yeah. But uh, I, love, we, I love the way that you're thinking though. I do what I love is, is the, the, the way your mind is working because what you're seeing now these days is is this attitude which is oh what fucking American collectors are paying a thousand dollars for a statue we will make ours a thousand dollars what mentality is that that's not the mentality you're killing the, you're killing the market you're killing no, it we're, not we're only going to put the prices price. up we'll put everything the shipping everything is as well and you have so. distribution 
Putin in the UK, if I'm under the understanding, you have a you have a few you have European and UK um, places, correct? Right now we have one. The EU one is based in the UK, but after Brexit, you know Brexit, we're going to have to get another EU one. To see <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> The people have spoken. I can't. Alex's <laughs> Swedish girlfriend's got a fucking pack of shit and get out and all. <laughs> yeah, she has to leave. She's got to go, man. So that breakfast, she said to me, as soon as that happened, you know, in the clubs, everyone was already, you know, yeah. concerned. Like, oh, what are you going to do about us? We're in the EU. You're because leaving the EU. Because the product is like eight, eight months, <laughs> eight months down the line. Yeah. Another word about the shipping costs yeah. and, and the taxes and yeah. stuff. That's so what we said. We sort them out yeah, in time. Yeah. But you know, that, sorry. So, this this is what we mentioned yesterday on the chat, but uh, sorry, whenever the last chat was on now, because I don't know when it's going up, but what um, <laughs> First and Figures have is they actually have distribution all over the world. So they've got warehouses in uh, Canada, uh, UK, uh, Australia. Australia is uh, the list we're planning okay. to do next. Because so um, when people in the UK, for example, place an order, we, we normally pay 20% from uh, yeah. America, uh, yeah. We pay that. We pay that to come in on top of shipping and the <laughs> item price, which is yeah, yeah. a lot. That's to add exactly on. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, exactly uh, it. and also, shipping prices have increased by a hell of a lot. Uh, shipping prices used to be forty dollars. Uh, the last piece I got was one hundred and twenty-five dollars to ship. I uh, used to then pay twenty percent. <laughs> and then twenty percent. And then you pay twenty oh, yeah. percent on top of that on top. shipping as well. On the so total price, just the item price uh, is the total price of shipping. So, for, so, for, no. for, so for example, right? So, for example, Deadpool costs seven. The recent most the Deadpool thing that's going to be additioned out of the arse, seven hundred dollars, right? Then we're going to do one hundred and twenty dollars in shipping. Then we're going to do about one hundred and fifty dollars, one hundred and fifty dollars in tax. So that piece is going to cost us a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars, and then also um, the the exchange rate is really bad at the moment. It used to be oh, that yeah, it was uh, one point five five uh, dollars to the pound, and now it's gone down to around one twenty. <laughs> so that really bumps it because I also got um, I had a Arkham Knight Batman on order from Prime One. I cancelled it. I had it paid in full, and when the money came back into my account, I was a hundred pound up because it was dollars to pounds. So what I paid is it gave me an extra hundred pound, but the other way around is it now it's it it? a lot more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cancel your pre-orders and get your money. Um, but yeah, so it's you'd, so like, you'd be like a thousand dollars up, like when you cancel your shit, you're like, wow, I've just made a thousand dollars. It's genius. If Pop Culture Shot gave me all my money back, I'd be well up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that ain't happening, man. It ain't happening. But sorry, anyway, I was just you're explaining not, Alex, the, Alex the Ducks, you're not getting away with this. Tell me the piece. I haven't forgotten. Tell me the piece that you've seen that you wish you'd made. I, I, I hadn't, that I hadn't made, did you say? Yeah, a piece that you may have seen in a collection or online or anywhere, and then you've gone, fuck, I wish I'd made that. I wish my name was attributed to that. Oh, my God. I mean, the early years is like a cringe thing. Yeah. Like, holy shit, man. I mean, that warrants a swearing, because fuck me, they were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't even look at the old school stuff without just absolutely cringing. And you, you'll see me when people talk about the history of first figures and what we were making before, and like, oh, what's this WWE character you made, or what's this? And I was like, oh, cringe. You know, there's <laughs> loads of that sort of stuff. I mean, there is a ton of those sort of things. So, um, but in the modern era, I would say it cringes me from my original Fist Deity Link that was made from Zelda, simply because I know what it represents to people now. A lot of people pay a top dollar because of our Zelda line is, you know, the po most popular line that we have. And people pay serious money for this Fist 30 link. And it cringes. It makes me cringe because I know what they're going to get. Yes, they like it because it is what represents, it is the character. They, people love it. But I look at it and I can see it's horrendous. It's terrible. The engineering is just disgraceful. And the whole thing was when I didn't know what the hell was going on. And yes. Yeah. That makes me cringe all the time, despite people still liking it. But if you compare yeah. that statue to, and if I said if I was going to make that now, holy smokes, that would be just. Yeah, but you, the, you uh, know that sounds the, like. Is that got the odd boots on? Is that, that where, is that the one who's wearing odd boots? <laughs> <laughs> Someone measured on the other day, and one's like. Yeah, well, one's that's like not the reason why I don't like it. <laughs> but you know what? That sounds to me like it's very similar to this, the the uh, Spielberg Jaws. You know. It's the same, the same thing. 
You know, he, he, we look at it, we look at it, and we love, love it. I fucking love Jaws, but if you, he hates that film now because he was there with all the problems when they were making it. And I think that's probably what you're seeing. Mm. You're seeing that a, a piece at a time where maybe your knowledge wasn't what it is now, you know, retrospectively, that's all it, it, you probably see more of the hassle that you went through rather than the reward, which is exactly, I think, what, what Jaws is like. We still spoke, we spoke so maybe that's... as well. So yeah, also going back, I just want to throw it up because I love bringing it up, but that's the same as Robocop anyway. Peter Weller hates Robocop because of all the hassles with it. But um, just going back, that's the same thing we were talking about yesterday with, uh, we, we've been doing reviews now for about three and a half years. And uh, when we look back on some of the reviews we did three, three years ago, we're like, oh, fuck, really? And we're going, this piece is amazing. This is one of the best pieces we've seen. And we look at it and we're like, oh, my God. But it was, yes, yeah, to do with at that time, that was what we thought was amazing. And um, I actually had someone uh, contact me because we put out a, um, a review on Vega. And I tried out some new equipment, some new lighting. Uh, we we adjusted the camera settings. We used a tripod, and the quality we thought we're like we're like we're we're, we're quite happy with that. And we're going to try and maybe get rid of all the old videos that we've got, post them up, and then we're going to go with the style in future. Someone messaged me and said to me, "I don't like the new style. It doesn't look like you guys. Uh, it's too clean. I'm used to you guys dropping the camera. I'm used to you guys <laughs> you know, the microphone not working. I'm used to you know the lighting being bad. I'm used to it being shaky. I'm used to the, you know, there's always something wrong. And now this one, there's there's no issues with it, and I don't like it. <laughs> really? You know, it was just the way they said that. That's dedication, man. That's loyalty there. Yeah, yeah. casting couch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, casting couch stuff. Yeah. Oh, well, that's why I just bought that. Days. They're the real good old days, them. I bought all that old style editing equipment to get rid of those VHS tapes I've got. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but sorry, the question um, that George was saying as well was uh, out of all the pieces from other companies that you've seen, what piece would you like to say oh, I made that? You know, if you could say. Other company. Yeah. Which one? So basically, from pieces that other companies have made that you've seen, uh, that you think, wow, that piece is amazing. What piece would you like to have said? I was involved in that project. That was mine. Oh, oh, okay. Well, you know, I'm not going to talk about <laughs> the, what I would want to be, you know, involved with it necessarily. I can sort of can say aesthetically, like pieces that were blew my mind. Were yes, yeah. absolutely sure. ones that blew my mind was when I was in New York. Uh, this is again back when I was bunking off university. Uh, it was the most incredibly amazing thing. I walked over to look at that, and I went. I looked over that, then I walked over to my booth after and said, what the, f <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, as, as I said, nowadays, the line is much more blurred because the technology yeah. and it's much easier to yeah. get everybody at this sort of level. But back then, absolutely blew my mind. Well, I walked over to it was 100% sideshows, Wolverine versus Sabretooth in the snow, diorama, oh, held yeah, up the air. Holy so lovely. shit. That sells for a lot of money. Then, Good piece. Right. Yeah, back then. So if you just if you just said it's an American premium format original, I was gonna fucking leave the chat. I was waiting. <laughs> I was this close. If you if you just said it, I would have been like red bar. I'm I'm out of here. Gone. <laughs> no, it's not about the, um, the dynasty. You know the whole piece in terms of what it represents, engineering wise, the pose, mm. the concept. That's it's what you know, you know really sort of. Um, sort of made me sort of consider and a bit of that was sort of influencing how I made the dread versus death look on your you know if you look yeah. at what I did for what we did for dread versus death um, in terms of that was a really sort of complicated piece that really helped me cut my teeth in terms <laughs> of understanding what can be done combining versus yeah. diorama and all that sort of stuff yeah, but, yeah th well, that, I mean um so, yeah, I would have liked to have said that. So, actually, yeah, that, yeah, I would have liked to have said that. Their dioramas used to be really, I mean, uh, they, they were great. I mean, um, I had the um, Punisher versus Daredevil, and uh, it's not their best one, but I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I, I fucking oh, broke it, though. My, my shelf collapsed on it. Colossus and like Cyclops do with the uh, yeah, you know, yeah. With oh yeah yeah the classics yeah 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 the uh, Sentinel diorams yeah yeah, yeah. That, that was the second one in the series I was just like my mind was blown every time uh, you know it's not you know, it takes a lot more to blow my mind now but you know it's uh, you see, back I, then. that's it isn't it that's the same with us is there's an innocence 
to your thinking at the beginning. And then what happens is, is the standards you see, me, me, me and Alex, we're quite fortunate because we've seen thousands of pieces, thousands of pieces from all different companies. We've been all over the world looking at them. Uh, you know, we make it our mission to do that because we love the hobby so much that what we want to do is we want to see as much as we can. We want to see everything we can, anything and everything we want to see. So, but what happens with that is that your standards become higher of it oh. is your standards become very high and you know innocence of certain pieces gets lost like you, you it does happen where you look at it and you're like you know what i would have been you know i reckon two, two and a half years ago i would have got a piece now that i'd be like oh so it's, it's average i would have it would have blew my tiny mind and i'd have been so happy with it yeah. so sometimes you have to remember that you know what i mean you yeah. get that all the time got, now collectors who never buy who, for the for, for mm. the for the new guys we get that all the time for the guys who are upgrading their collection into a first of figures new your resin mm. statue you see yeah. that you know you see that now especially if you it's like an evolution statue yeah an old statue that they're like oh this is amazing i'm like okay a little bit cringy because it's a it's an old product i know we could have done better but for them it's that 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 the average the thing that we look back and think with rose tinted glasses that it's average they think it's the most amazing thing and of course, as they yeah. go and they discover more and more of our stuff, then they go, okay, well, actually, that is decidedly, you know, the stuff that, you know, the artorias that you make now versus, you know, what you made eight years ago, it's like, you know, Artorius's boots, they're the same height, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but you're always going to get someone if who... I, if, um... I'd sat my, uh, if I'd have sat my geography uh, GCSE today, I probably would have passed it a bit better. You know, <laughs> <laughs> hindsight is a wonderful thing. It's not a surprise that I can't find my way out of my fucking house these days, but that's how it works. But it is like there, there is also a lot of people who um, they'll always go for the original pieces as well. Yeah, it's uh, cold, sometimes cold, the original cold, pieces aren't aren't better, but they just they just want the originals. So I did actually uh, just find I found the image for um, the Judge Dread. I did show it while you guys were talking. So that's the piece, yeah. Uh, Horace, this, yeah, that's yeah, it, so absolutely. Right. And right, so. you know, I actually made this life size. There's a couple of images of me or with Kanaka, my wife, next to it, and it's got a life-size version of this. But this, uh, which I, you know, I can show that to you guys later, but uh, this piece really represented the whole idea of being more ambitious, way more ambitious in design, and not being scared, where no longer does the engineering limit the design. The design comes first, and we engineer the shit about it, out of it later. That was the term yes, which yes. not I love that. about design being number one, and that that for me is something I'm very proud of to think about how that is uh, how that incorporates into the future. It takes a lot more to sort of scare me in terms of in in, in terms of design wise. What does scare me is when bases become too big, or the it becomes so complicated design wise that it becomes it prices us out. That, yes, yes. As in it becomes too expensive for the people who expect the pricing. Um, and I just wanted to quickly go back, and we sort of went off topic on this one, was as we do, this we whole pre-order system where we have this open pre-order. You have some, you know, it's a double-edged sword. We have some that aren't, you know, that should have, you know, underappreciated, like Simon should have sold more. You know, I was, a, you know, I liked Simon, right? But I said, he didn't sell very many. You know, it's a shame. It, the pre-order was 299 you know, it would have been nicer to be more, right? And but we have one where our most recent one uh, before, so the pen, the previous one, not not sorry, two mm -hmm. ago with Majora's Mask that sold two thousand three hundred, and it was amazing, absolutely amazing. Now the price of that was three, you know, it was it's three hundred eighty five dollars. Now it's a life size Majora's Mask, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> the price is given under the assumption we're going to sell. You know, obviously some licenses have different expectations yeah, because yeah. we have history against them. So let's say we have made the assumption that they were going to sell, let's say, 700 pieces. To sell it at 2,300 pieces mm, of the mm. Majora's Mask has allowed for us to have this buffer of, I don't need to worry about paying wages for the next seven months, eight months, or whatever it is, because yes, it's yes. been, the, the response to that Majora's Mask has fueled us to be able to not worry about, the only thing I care about is I don't have to, you know, that the lights keep on, the lights stay on, the staff are paid. That for me as the business owner is the most important thing because it doesn't, you know, otherwise it doesn't work. Now the fact that we have that buffer means that 
we don't have to live hand to mouth on the next statue release, which means we don't have to put, raise the price. And we are always thinking, what can the, what can this, what can the collector afford? What, and, 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 and try and position that rather than what are our competitors selling it at, therefore we can sell it at that price as well. It's totally the wrong way of thinking. Sure. Do you not, do you not, do you not think to yourself that sometimes maybe the the, the open edition the open pre order things like like, 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 like there, there is a moment in things in hand and then they're like my fucking god you know the review comes out and it's like I need this piece and do you not think that maybe that when you do like your pre order and the Simon you say like let's say it's, let's say it's two hundred ninety pieces do you not think that maybe you go up to three fifty or or maybe to three seven five and you keep that back there just in case that takes off because I've got to tell you that, you know, as a, I mean, it's a great thing to do. Don't let this, don't worry. I don't want you to up your edition. So I don't upset any of your fan base or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. But sometimes like anything, like a wine or something, you know, it's once you, once you swallow it, that you understand, it's like, wow, you understand that is nice. Like, yeah, I'll have a bottle of that. You understand what I mean? It's having that a few numbers set aside that you can make, you know what I mean? Because it, it unfortunately, before the piece is out, it, it makes a big difference. A review for Sideshow Collectibles, right? We did the Lobo review. We got it up. And that is a, a high edition piece, okay? Once that review went up, it was it was gone. Once people had seen that, that piece had sold out. And thousands of them had sold. We were just like, oh, Jesus Christ, where'd this come from? And I think, you know, it's, it, it might be, it's a smart idea to have a bit of a buffer. So if, if you get your open edition size and let's say it gets to 290, you just say, okay, let's add maybe 75 to that number just in case. You know what I mean? Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely get what you're because... saying. But what, what, what I would say to that is, you know, absolutely. And I wouldn't go as much as 75, if anything, maybe 10%. <laughs> but, you know, I, but, no, but seriously, but what you also have to know is this. We have this history of 14 years of data that tells us something. The pre-orders that we get at the end of that pre-order, we will see at least 30 to 35% cancellations on those. In the moment that we get that pre-order up to the moment that we actually get it into the marketplace. Now that number, to be honest with you, has been reducing over time. As we, because we told, turn, how, we turn around Artorias, we, June, yeah. or the end of June. The way we do pre-orders is that, it's not like you pre-order a game where you have an image on, on Amazon or something, and then you pre-order, and then you've got to wait until the game is finished and developed. We yes, know yeah, yeah. with a counter sample. So obviously the turnaround from the actual pre-order to actual release is much, much shorter. Yeah. And obviously yeah. that's why we want to cut down the, 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 yeah. the amount of time to, to release in the product, uh, to release in the market. So like roughly about eight months. And like Artorias, if it wasn't for the art print, we would have got Artorias out for Christmas. For Christmas. Within, within six months. Within six months. Well, obviously, yeah, I mean, that must help your cancellation rate as well, surely. Yeah, if, if, yeah, if, 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 if it's there, and then because I, I, a lot of the pieces, I mean, I think that's the reason why Pop Culture Shock are not refunding people, is because if they did, if they, if they openly said, yeah, okay, it's two years late, I'm going to refund you, but they're, all their pre-orders, would majority of them would have been cancelled because it, there's so many people that want to get out because it's just too long to wait. The time is what kill, can kill people. If it's too long, yeah, sure. collections change, other things come out. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what um, annoyed me about some of, my, some of my pop culture shock stuff is, uh, yeah, my collection's totally changed since then. Um, back then, I had all movie pieces. Uh, oh, I don't years think ago. Have any there <laughs> apart from Pinhead. Uh, well, I've got, um, <laughs> oh, got, got Darkman, Pinhead, Hellboy, oh, I Freddy. See, I can't see above Pinhead. I can't see above Pinhead. But all right. Seeing. And then... Um, over the other side, I've got uh, Robocop, Terminator. Oh, you do now then, don't you? Because, uh... Uh, yeah, I've got you like a, <laughs> yeah, Evil Dead, uh, no, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. Friday 13th, Legend. Yeah, I've got I loads think, of, uh, I've got movies. Up, I, I, I think, I think that, yeah, I think, I think that's smart business. Like if, if you can put it up and then get it out, you know, a, a really, smart timeline between six and eight months obviously that must that should surely help your uh, cancellation rate so that you know so don't... The data of like the 30 percent, as i said it was before when we didn't do that and it used to take maybe a year year and a half perhaps but we've we've done drastic measures of having high production team and all that sort of stuff to reduce that um, and that's sort of in the process of becoming quite squeaky clean and quite 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 smooth 
so yes, nice. the answer is, but the point I'm trying to say is, we do get cancellations. So there's no point in adding 75, you know, the, the 200, 300 to 375. This is why well, we have the waiting list. And obviously mm -hmm. like people that uh, came in late to the, to the party or they just saw the review, they could always jump on, onto the waiting list. And yeah. obviously we, we've got to fulfill yeah. the, uh, the guys that pre-order first. And obviously uh, waiting list is all about, it's a bit like gambling, right? Yeah. So if yeah. somebody can, I mean, yeah, yeah, it is, it is, it is is a very it, it's very interesting to me because you know it, it, how to how to establish those numbers because i true i do truly believe that once pieces are in hand and available to review i really believe now i don't buy this three percent shit I never have i truly believe that once somebody sees it in film you know like a, in actual a collector's hand it things change and i really you know i think that that you know that belmont for an example you know, once, I mean, I think Alex has that coming. I think Alex has, perked, Alex has got one of them come. So once we review that, you know, and people start to see that, I, I really think people will, I really believe that that's what makes the difference because it's the way I now will purchase from Sideshow. If I'm going to buy a Sideshow piece now, I'm going to do it based off a collector's review. I won't pre-order anymore. It will be based off their review. And then I'll be like, you know what? That's what I'm going. You know, I'm going to use that as my measuring stick, so to speak. So I guess it, I, I am. It does interest me how you uh, you gauge what numbers you can physically go for. I guess it's a very. It's, I guess it's really difficult. No, it must be very, very hard. You know, it's a refined science that's changed over the years, and as as the situation in the company changes as well. You know, as we said, much higher percentage cancellation. Well, before we just did a. You know, we did a. Um, uh, the, a fixed edition size of 500 pieces, whatever it would have been, because we would never make yeah. them. We didn't have the orders. Whatever it says on the website is doesn't mean anything. Um, yeah. Because if it didn't, if it didn't sell 500 pieces, well then we didn't make that many pieces. We have, whatever we made, plus about 10 percent, has always been. That, that's with the understanding that 20 to 30 percent will cancel. Therefore, you have 40 percent of that, which you can sell through over the years afterwards. Yes. Um, yeah. But that's about your appetite for can you afford to pay storage? <coughs> now that we have four webs, four warehouses, you've got to pay far more attention to that because now you've got to, you know, there's stock in that country and there's stock in that country, but there is a stock there. Therefore, how do I now get it to the collector who's in, who, who's in, uh, you know, uh, in, in the UK when I have stock in Canada and I have a stock in America? Well, yeah, you know, all of that sort of stuff is like, and you times that by 20 products. Yeah, that's it's a logistic nightmare. It's just nightmare, man. Why don't we just let those guys deal with twenty percent <laughs> on the top of the shipping? <laughs> Dude, have you oh, seen us on the chat? If you see us on the chat when there's an echo, we fucking crack up. Don't give me logistics nightmares of three different countries, bro, or three different <laughs> continents. Don't give me them headaches. I can only deal with Alex on a good day. <laughs> Absolutely. I think to be honest with you, what what have you got at the moment? that you're really excited about. Tell me some, you know, some of the part, I mean, personally, myself, I am absolutely gushing to see your, um, your Tekken line. Appreciate when I it. saw that King and I saw that, Jesus Christ, that was the moment I thought, who the fuck are these guys? What That's is this? Because I, 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 I can only, I can only be honest and say that it was that moment, that King, like, that yeah. King made me sit there and go, these, this is, this is some, this is work. This is some serious work. I need to find out. And I mean, we've been saying it, we, me and Alex have been gushing about that. That line really interests me a lot personally. What do you think you've got going on at the minute that you'll really think there's going to be some serious, impressive stuff coming out? Talk to go um, first. I know what I would choose. You probably really? choose the same one as me, but <laughs> sure. game changer, hopefully. Oh, go, you, you go first. Well, <laughs> well the one I'm really, really looking forward to. Obviously, we all know there's we, we, we do the Zelda stuff, we do the Dark Souls stuff, but for me, we really want to push into the anime. And for me, I hope I hope we're on the same yeah, yeah, definitely wavelength, same one, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. For me, it's gotta be Berserk. And yeah. I'm like, we're working together, like spending hours on this, making sure it's gonna be right, the face has got to be right, the pose, the feeling, the action, everything's gotta be right. Cause I'm, you know, I'm I for me, I'm a gamer, my background is a QA. You know, I'm like really one of those attention to detail guys. I've got to make sure that, you know, if I'm, if, if you got to think from the customer view, if I'm happy, sure, I can let it out. If I'm not happy, it ain't going out. That's how it is. 
you know, I, if I tell you it's shit, it's shit. You know me, you know yeah, my attitude. Yeah, so, so. You need that to, yeah. to raise the bar. Um, All right, cool. Because we want to, we, I mean, we can do all the, 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 the Polygon stuff, the, the, the Mario, the, the, the Sonic, you know, the, the cutie plane, you know, basic brash stuff. But we can also... I love your Mega Man stuff as well. Your Mega Man stuff's really nice. Cool. And, uh, I, did see, um, I did see someone in the group. I did see someone in the group saying, uh, are you going to release a new Mega Man? And I was, I wanted to comment, but I thought, oh no, I'll leave it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we still got Mega Man in the works. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we want to really push ourselves. We want to go into more detailed stuff. You know, like, you know, we, you know, we challenge ourselves. That's the whole point of the, being, this, being in this uh, industry. Yeah. So, so we exactly wanted to do that. Yeah. Mm. That's uh, serious. I, I, yeah. Mm. I, I, wanted, I wanted to echo, echo what you said. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. For, for, for that being announced, for sure, because it, Berserk and Guts represents a, for me, it, it's, it's not the difficulty in making it and all that, it's actually what it represents mm -hmm. as well. You know, we actively, one and a, about a year, a year ago, said, done, video games, sweet. If we, if we want it, we've got it. If we can't get it, we can't get it. You know, the number one selling franchise in the world, Mario. Boom. Thanks very much. You know, um, well, going through all the lists of you look through the top 20 franchises, maybe half of them, we've covered them. And if we can't do it, it's because, you know, you can't really make a Call of Duty because it's a generic dude, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, or whatever it may be. So if you look down that list of who's who's for the, the most biggest selling franchises, you know, to, to our own horn, but man, we've done an amazing job by capturing the vast majority of those and if we can't we can't get it if we can't get it now we you know we can't get it there's nothing we can do and we said what we want to do is now actively go into the anime space as well um and that was to uh, and last year was all about license acquisition and this year is about license development and in one year's time you're going to start seeing anime coming out from us once a month until we get to that point when it gets even more and Berserk represents the sort of hardcore side of, of the animes that we picked up. Sure. And, um, you know, the deep, because obviously that kind of, you could say, is inspiration for Dark Souls. So sure. that's, yeah. that's also very close to our heart as well. And, yeah. I, I, and the Collectors Club as well was what very influential in that. When's Guts coming? Come and do Berserk. Yeah. When's Guts coming? And that, you know, that sort of brainwashes us. We're like, oh, I think we should be doing Berserk. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, when it comes time to buy you're listening, right? mate. At least you're listening. That's the yeah, most well, important that's, thing. Yeah, we'll be here with because you'd be surprised how many people claim to not know or yeah. that they don't know. Yeah. Well, a few people, um, there's a few guys who mentioned uh, Berserk and Guts to me when uh, there was a few licenses released. I mentioned them and I said, um, <laughs> I love I love the guy over. I can't wait for the guy over, blah, 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 all this sort of stuff. And I'm talking about that. And they said to me, Oh, you know, you like Guy you, you like Fistful of Star, you like this, that, that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I love that. I love Fistful of Star. Have you ever seen Guts? And I was like, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. That's a dude with a big sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch it. So I watched, um, I think I watched nine episodes of the original one. And uh, I, I enjoyed it. But then they took it off of uh, YouTube when I watched it. And I was like, well, I'll, I'll sort it out. I'll watch it later. I've just got Kiss Anime, so I'm going to uh, going to go through and watch it. Um but Guts is really cool. I mean, I did really enjoy it. Really enjoyed um, watching it. Really like, uh, uh, I wouldn't say different, but it's, uh, it's, it's got a nice feel to it. And, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I quite enjoy watching it. So, I mean, I would quite look forward to seeing uh, the Guts and the anime line, definitely, for sure. Yeah. And they're huge. Um, anime is massive. People don't realize how big anime is. Anime is like, um, yeah. You know, Guts also goes beyond just the fact that we think it's an amazing character and story. It goes beyond that. It's also, of course, a bit of friendly competition with the two others. Now, I didn't want to bring that up, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, look, you know, and the reality is we, 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 we live and die by our product. And that's all we can really say about that. And um, it's a, it's a, it, it's just an added sort of level of intrigue to that piece. Um, yeah, yeah, but there's, yeah. there's also another element to that, which is, you know, you will be, you will be the more fairly priced. And, <laughs> you're you making know, assumptions. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> but, 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 yeah, you're, you're making an assumption. They make it. Oh, no, no, no. No, I, I mean, I, you know, I, the prime one sort of stuff, you know, 
know, you're talking even in quarter scale is anywhere between seven, you know, seven fifty and a thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, and let's just let's just put it this way. Let's let's just, let's just cut the shit and put it this way, right? If you did the same price right now, if you went, okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna do the sideshow thing, and we're gonna say, if you're willing to pay that, then you're willing to pay that for us, right? Okay. If you were to take that stance, at least in Europe and in the UK, we, that's twenty percent cheaper, and shipping, and that's a big diff. That's a big difference just when that alone. That amount when you're going into the four digits. 20% of that is huge. Massive. Yeah. Massive. It is huge because I'm going to save about probably 300 pounds. 250 yeah. pounds, 300 pounds. What's going to say it's going to, it's, it's quite a big deal. I mean, you know, so there is, you know, sometimes competition, you know, I, I always used to say, you know, iron sharpens iron. So it's always a good thing to sort of like put yourself out there. We lose or draw, you know, it's better to, you know, go out on your shield, so to speak. And, 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 and try and put some good stuff out there. So I commend you, man. Well, that's what it's about. I hope, uh, I hope to see these things. I really do. Well, yeah, that's the so thing. The as well, thing it's, good it's good to show that you're not, um, you're not kind of scared when other companies have those licenses because other companies could be like, hang on a minute, they've got that license. Um, let's come back to that one a bit later on. But it's can good that you're not, not doing that. Can we be clear about something? Go ahead. The licenses take months and months and months to get. We got that license ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> we're scared. Show your teeth, man. Show your teeth, right now. Um, but you know, we got that, and then they got it. You know, like, oh fuck. <laughs> so I'm uh, <laughs> shaking myself right now. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I don't something here. this actually leads on to what we were going to bring up earlier, and I've, I did put it off a little bit. But uh, this leads on to your group anyway, because I mean, obviously you're saying that Chocos has been building up this group. Uh, you've got over 17,000 people in your uh, in your Facebook group. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's, that's huge. I mean, that's that's huge. huge. That's serious, man. That is uh, massive. Uh, we're, we're, we're only on like, I don't know, 3,000. And to moderate that takes a lot of time. Um, yeah. But when I go on to the First of Figures group, I look every single comment I click on, you two are commenting on every every single post. I mean, <laughs> that's robot shock. Yeah, that ain't me. We're yeah. just sitting and chilling ourselves. <laughs> you got, you I literally go. You've got two angry partners out there, probably sitting, have yeah. eating noodles, going, "Them fuckers are never home. They never talk to us." Yeah. You know what I mean? You've got like a you're gonna have a widows club, man. Just like my wife says about this statue game. Even with us, she says the yeah. same thing. I'm on I'm on my phone non-stop replying to stuff. And half the time I'll go on the group and I'll scroll down going, I don't really need to comment on that one. I'll go past it. I don't yeah I, I okay I've got to go into that one. But I'll kind of vet what I have to go into sometimes. But literally as I say I go into your group and I'm like, yeah he's commenting on that and that. And there's like <laughs> and there's a stream there of about you know, a thread of about 20 comments on that one underneath that single comment. It's like, Jesus Christ, where, where'd you get the time to do that? But Shout out to my wife. No, it's, it's, it's really good. <laughs> In case you don't remember what I look like, this is what I look like. What is up? And to my, my this is what daddy looks like. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, they'll, they'll show, we'll show this at the, when they, you know, graduate. You'll be like, yeah, there he is. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> but again, with the group as well, it shows how uh, you do have a really loyal following. And um, it's important. It is, it is actually like really... Said, it's um, that USP. It's the whole thing about yeah. what happens about recasts. What happens about 10 years' yeah. time? It's not about the product anymore. It's about the personalities behind it. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to start focusing more on YouTube and this this sort of thing where you hear me narrating and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And you know, it's all part of this whole kind of brand building that that needs to happen in order for us to be, you know, trying to keep the lights on and sustain. It's just sustain basically product. stay connected with the members. As, yeah. as, you know, as we grow, hopefully, you know, we can go go to these events and tours and actually meet them face to face. It's nice. It's all nice and well. You know, we, yeah, we recognize all the names, we remember all the names, we know what they want, we know what they're expecting, we know we owe them money, we know we have issues, we're sorting you out, you know, the good stuff and the bad stuff, we, we, we learn, you know, this is how we, we take these feedback, like, oh, we want this, uh, we want a USB chargeable battery. And yeah, you, you always like that in your Kami, the yeah. uh, USB thing, but you, you're like, you know, keep that yeah. on. So we take but all no, this 
So. No, I think I think that's great. And as I say, with um, you know, you two are the sort of faces of your company, and people know who you are. There's other companies that do that as well. I mean, everyone knows um, the pop culture shock uh, boss because he's always uh, you know he's always around. And then you see all the other guys as well. But the big big companies like um, Sideshow and uh, even Prime One and uh, places like that, you have no clue who these who these bosses are. Yeah, but um, it's shown. It shows it's because same. you know what I mean. It's it's very mu- it's very much. You know, it's become, I think, in the last few years, a, a little bit more faceless. It, I always, I compare it now, um, Sideshow like especially, to, to like a, a Tesco or a Walmart. I, I don't think, I, I really don't think the one-to-one thing is there anymore. I think they've become, yeah. they, they they feel like they don't, they, they just separate themselves. It's purely business now. And um, I think, I agree completely with uh, with Alex and Chuckles there. I believe, I believe that I believe that people don't follow companies, they follow people. It's not about supporting a, a brand, it's about supporting a, the human being behind it. I completely agree with that, I'm, not, I'm that, the same. You know, that, that came about from the, the starting of the Collectors Club um, and the fact that first figures needed to have a face and needed to come out of the shadows to actually be at the front. Because, you know, I it, actually, actually, the way that came about actually was not was not actually, it actually came out from a, from a wholesale point of view. Now I was dealing, working with my wholesale, having a meeting with my um, wholesaler, who's a distributor. And he uh, was at the time, our exclusive distributor all over the world, you know, in Europe at the time. And he was saying it was quite difficult to get the message from first figures to the, dis- uh, to the, to the, to the retailer. So he, he's a distributor to the retail partners. And, you know, it was always like Greg from Sideshow or Randy yeah, yeah, yeah. from Andy Bowen, or it's like, you know, Jerry from Pop Culture Shock. And, and it was much easier to try and get the message across to the, to the retailers by sort of naming the person, by saying, oh, you know, yeah. Greg says this, or Jerry says that, and, oh, you know, this one's, you know, sorry about the breakages that you've got for this item in the QC. It's going to be improved next time. And Jerry sends his regards. <laughs> Or you know, Greg sends his regards. Randy sends it. You know, whatever it may be. You don't get that with oh, it's just first figures. It's just for first figures. There's no name behind it. So with the collectors club, really was quite a. It came from that to be, to be Alex at first figures talks to the re, to, talks to the retailers, but that obviously leads to you can't just be, you know, the face of the wholesale side. It also became the whole thing. And, you know, to have Chalks as well to, you know, you know, Chalks to see him in the club right at the beginning. So it was, it would have been like March time or April time. No, no, it wasn't. It, we, you joined in June, no, May, you joined in May. Yeah. You know, Chalks, he'd come over in April. We just, you know, he first messaged us in what was December to mm-hmm. say, yeah. oh, you guys in Hong Kong, you know, you, you know that part. And at that stage we had, I didn't have an office. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, come and see us. In when we open when we open the office and we opened the office in March and then got the uh, and then you came in what end of, end of, end of March maybe April or something like that yeah. and I'd seen Chucks in the club doing what he does now <laughs> right which is answering people helping people out uh, being you know doing that and yeah. and he's very patient as well you know this is the most important thing and <laughs> you know to to I said Chucks let's go for a meal let's just talk see what's around and you know hired him on the concept that he was going to be the handyman didn't know what job i want he was going to do just knew that <laughs> he should be part of the group you know he should be part of the uh, should be part of the team to do what he's already doing but in a in a way that it's um you know the, the way he's been doing it now and it's, he's done a fantastic job you know, uh, you know well, with, them, job, with them yeah. type of numbers we want him Chocks, get your <laughs> <laughs> over here man <laughs> well we we turn that, that, I mean, that was... three thousand to twenty thousand and they can go back. Well, we were, we were talking, I was saying about how, uh, you know, I look through the comments and uh, you're both very, very patient on your comments as well. Um, I tell George to be very patient and every now and again, I'll read a comment and someone will say something and George will just message him saying, yeah, go fuck yourself. And I'm like, okay. I always say with, me man it's team real mean it's not fake nice it's real mean at least whatever i say whether good bad or indifferent at least it's the truth i never lie 
yeah, just fly evil. I never lie. They they figure it out sooner or later. There's only so much fakeness you could like like be yeah. right. If you become if you repeat the same BS time after time, man, you get bored of your own BS as well. <laughs> 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 so, I was like, so you just tell it what it is. Like, Sorry, mate, we don't have any updates. We'll give you an update in in tonight's Q and A or something. You know, yeah. just, we'll just be honest about it. You know, you know, talking about the modding and all that sort of stuff, we have a fantastic team of uh, admins that actually do help with making sure that the tone doesn't descend. Um, yeah, yeah. Where there's no, if there is a situation where it's it's very very easy when you have competing love for competing franchises. You know, oh, why are you working on the Zelda stuff? Says all the Dark Souls fans, and all the Dark Souls yeah. fans, you know, and all the Zelda fans. Why are you working on Dark Souls? <laughs> and it, that can really easily just come to a head. Everyone's very passionate about what Blood they're trying. Blood Crips, man. Zelda yeah. beating Dark Souls, <laughs> guys. The war, fights, <laughs> red versus blue. The trash. Oh, yeah, the uh, the struggle yeah, continues. <laughs> you get that a lot. I mean. going on. <laughs> um, and um, it's. We have a fantastic team. Absolutely big shout out to the admin teams that we've really, really sort of selected. And we get a lot of people now saying they want to be admins as well. But we really don't, we don't just go, oh, sure. <laughs> it's, we let to see how do they actually sort of, are they helpful? What do they do? And yeah. we're very, very selective about that. And if it starts descending into chaos, and, and the admins are all in different time zones as well in order to sort of, yeah. to sort of oh, do yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we've done as well. And actually Facebook have updated their um, policy things now so you can have moderators as well. On uh, groups. Oh, you always we, could we, do. We, we, planning to no, so originally, you couldn't. Yeah. yeah, originally you couldn't. When I set it up, you could only set up admins, and I was always worried they were going to kick me out my own group. So, <laughs> no, I've changed it. So every, everyone is a moderator apart from me. Right, right, right. I, oh, okay. Um, when did you guys set up RT group? Uh, about two and a half, three years ago. Okay, well, um, that would be the answer then, because we only set it up yeah. just a year ago. So, yeah. for us, yeah. Uh, last last I checked, no one booed me out of my own group. So uh. <laughs> I've, I've seen I've seen stories about it where people have uh, set up a big group, yeah. uh, set up like you know five thousand people, and all of a sudden they wake up in the morning, and nice. their their admins booting them out and taking over the whole group, and it's like yeah. But oh, anyway, that is some, um, that is some because, Julius Caesar shit, man. That is, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't I don't, even, I don't even trust George to be the other admin. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what I mean? It's funny, isn't it? It's my, bl it's my bloody, it's my bloody stuff, and I, 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 yeah. I, I, I got no problem. I just, I leave the bearded man, I leave, you know, the wizard behind the curtain. I, I'm happy. It's fine. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. The funny thing is, is that I, I think that because people, people just, I don't think people really truly understand. I, I have been best friends with Alex since we were five years old. There is, there, there isn't a. There isn't a piece of tracing paper that can get in between us, and that's that's the brutal truth. You know, yeah. we don't. Uh, you know, money, um, time, all of them things. All of this channel really does is is brings us closer together. So, you know, that's the whole point of it, really. That's how it started. It's it's that we have that freedom that I guess you do not have because we're two friends. We don't we don't have we're not loyal to any company or our our whole so to speak it's just about sharing everything everybody and everything with everyone that's our idea that's our plan you know that's the whole point it's not about you know give anybody a leg up it's about giving everybody a fucking leg up trying to get what we can out there it sounds like you guys were mates and then obviously as you go into adulthood and you go to your different <laughs> job you don't have that yeah. chance of being together as much so this is the way that you still remain like yeah. tight rows well, yeah, we had, uh, yeah, yeah. well, we had this other thing where uh, there were times where uh, we, we wouldn't talk for two, three months. And then yeah. uh, George, George, never <laughs> used to, uh, George never used to have a mobile phone. He was like, really behind. He got yeah. a mobile phone in like 2011 or 12. <laughs> you know, and that was only so his wife could keep track on him. But uh, <laughs> basically, he never had a mobile phone for a long time. So I didn't speak to him for months on end. And then yeah. uh, all of a sudden, you know, we... Uh, we, we, I think we went one time six months without talking, and then yeah. literally, we, but we, we, when we meet up, it's like we've never been away yeah, that long. So we are because we're such good friends. But now it's like we we uh, chat every day for like an hour, and uh, we we talk loads because now he's got a phone. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, but now bringing yeah we now yeah the channel has brought us closer together, you know, and it has in a way uh, to bring us together. So that's been good. Yeah. 
I think I think as long as the plan is to just you know I think as long as we keep that type of freedom. I mean that was what was so hard about the Imaginarium art situation. A lot a lot of the stuff behind the scenes that people just don't know about was just they they they're trying to, they're they're constant. They try to interfere. Basically say you know don't talk about you know XM or first for figures or any customs. You know I don't want you talking. You We'd be like. <laughs> I don't, don't worry yeah, about that. Yeah. Anybody, anybody, <laughs> dude, anybody you try to talk to, it, 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 you know, we were like, look, we don't, you know, we're not your fucking channel. We're our channel. It's not, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, it's started off with them sort of contacting us and going, look, man, you know, will, will you like show, will you try and highlight us? Because we're, we're struggling. Like, you know, we, you know, this is what happened. They come to us for help. And we were just like, you know what? Yeah, we'll do it. No problem. And we've done it. And it's fun. Funny, but once people sort of have a tendency to also to speak with you, they they then there comes this like fucking North Korean control that there's like, like well, I don't you sharing this and I don't want you sharing that and I don't want you talking about it. It's like, well, hold up a minute, we're not doing that. You know, we're happy to show your stuff and we're happy to be honest about what you got. But that doesn't mean that if somebody else was to come in and show us something, that we have to then turn it away because you don't like who they are or it's not you. Mm. Oh, there's, there, there is some massive, massive misunderstanding here. My understanding was that we were going to send you that. We were going to, we were going to send you that Okami Amaterasu that you got there. In, in return, you, you got to give me Neo the dog. That, that was my yeah. understanding. That dog yeah, that was yeah, me. Oh, sorry. Yeah. There's been some misunderstanding. Neo, this, this, this dog cost me fucking probably more than all of those Amaterasus you fucking released. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, it, you can keep lot, listen, it lost. It cost a lot of money to. Get Get a specially retarded dog, believe me. It costs too much money. All right, all right, you keep him, keep him there. <laughs> yeah, his dog, his dog is well, well, his dog is really special needs. I mean, it, I walked into his uh, hallway to go, I went to go to the toilet. Walk in the hallway, there's no light on. I turn the light on and his dog is standing, facing the wall, licking the wall. And I'm just See? like... Like, Neo, that's good you, money I spent like, there. Yeah. Good money Neo, pedigree that is. What are you doing, Neo? And he's like, oh, I pulled the dog away. And I'm like, is there something on the wall? And I'm like, it's just licking the wall. Stupid fucking thing. Um, <laughs> I, sorry, back, I, back I on track. I in the news the other day, which says that oh, no, pets really mimic the parrot, you know, the owner. <laughs> <laughs> I said that to George. I, I did say that it's to George. Why I do it in my own house is none of your damn business, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so just going back on to, so... Um, I mean, you guys have just done the uh, the link piece, the uh, the Breath of the Wild, uh, and then also, I mean, you've got the, that piece coming out. Uh, you've got the Nightmare Soul Calibur. Uh, you've got the Tekken King, uh, the Tekken Jin. Jin, uh, uh, Jin, I really like. Yeah, and also, well. I mean, um, I know a lot of people are asking for uh, some female Tekken characters, so uh, hopefully that will will happen soon. Uh, I know I've got a few people no, asking me to you me ask too. you guys. Ask you guys about Nina. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, got a message confirmed. about that. Confirmed. confirmed. Nice. Is that, is that, is that, that, is that started or is that, is the production that started? Deep in 3D. Fine. 3D. Cool, cool. Deep, deep in 3D. Oh, deep in 3D. Got that I wouldn't, mind getting, I wouldn't, <laughs> mind, getting, I wouldn't <laughs> mind getting deep in 3D with that. If that yeah. Okay, anyway. Um, the thing is, Nina's the, the blonde cop, right? That her father yeah. died, isn't it? And then, uh, is that right? He does the Hadouken again, like, you know, one of her forward and two punches is like... He's, uh, <laughs> he's super hot, man. I mean, for when it comes to Tekken, you know, I really want to see Hihachi. Well, Hihachi was done by another company, weren't they? But then... Uh, Triad Toys. Sorry, what's that? Triad Toys. Yeah, they that did Hihachi terrible. in another character. I saw that in um, Hive Studios' office. And uh, it, it was all right. I think you guys would do that much better anyway. That you guys need to uh, look at that. And also Yoshimitsu, that definitely needs doing. Oh, it's been done in the physical. Oh, thing. yeah? Oh, oh that's, that's one. Uh, I can't wait to see that. You already finished. Like, like finished, nice. finished. That would definitely be something that, you know, would also with um, the sort of style of your uh, Arturus, uh, Arturus and things like that, that would fit you nicely know, in there. You know, actually, we we saw it as being the sort of interconnecting piece between the Soul Calibur line and the Tekken line because he sort of invoked them. Yeah. So you can yeah, have is, yeah. Tekken stuff. Yoshi That's Mitsu, clever. Like a bridge, isn't it? That's clever. Exactly right. Exactly right. Exactly then right. You could, uh, well, then wouldn't you be able to do other characters? You're like uh, Soul Calibur have got like exclusive characters, don't they? 
Oh, Sorry, like they've got the uh, spawn. Even, yeah, the Kuma. That's even sort of looked at or even considering that that's a whole licensing quagmire. Would even sort of. Well, yeah, I mean, I know, work. I know Todd McFarlane is very, very uh, uh, protective of his license. Yo, Todd, well. hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's really protective. That's actually a good question, actually. Is so if you have the license for, like, let's say, for example, for Tekken, uh, maybe let's say Tekken Seven. Is that the most recent one? Yeah. It's yeah. Coming. Does that mean you can actually do like a Nakuma that is in Tekken or not? So um, without problem. going into sort of specifics that I don't 100% know about, there are definitely scenarios where let's take a good example. Uh, Hollywood Collector Group, without, you know, I don't know them, I've never met them, I don't know anything about them, but they did these uh, Marvel vs. Capcom pieces, which is probably a good oh, example. Hollywood, Hollywood Collectibles. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that, yeah. They did like Doctor Doom and Akuma, didn't they? I've seen them. Right. They have to like, uh, yeah, Dante, together. Yeah. Yeah. I think, believe that, I believe they had to pair them together. I don't know 100%, which sort of meant you had to buy two one fourth scales at one time. This is going back a bit, I can't quite remember. There may have been sort of things that you could kind of put them together if you sold them as a package. I don't think you could have ah. individually released them like that. I don't, you know, again, this yeah. is not, this is uh, totally uninformed about that particular situation. Uh, but I can tell you for sure, as, as an example for Smash Brothers, which is, uh, in case yeah. you don't know, it's a huge fighting game. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Game. Loads of good characters in there. There's a zero franchise game. Absolutely zero ability to name anything Smash Brothers due to the licensing limitations because there's so many different licensed characters yeah. involved in that. Uh, but the reality is we have most of them anyways, even if they're not the <laughs> ones. Well, <you're> right. <laughs> uh, wasn't um, Snake, wasn't Metal Gear Solid Snake in Smash Brothers one time? He was in the previous one. Yeah. Uh, I think he was in the recent one and the previous one. That game one. is massive. No, that, that's, that yeah. game is huge. Oh, so oh, is it's that? It's across Asia. That's massive, that game. I can't play it. I'm really, really crap at that game. I tried to play it recently. I got destroyed. But does that mean um, you might be making a Metal Gear Solid or? No, I mean, what I'm trying to say is you can't... No, no, no. Oh, oh, sorry, you mean... I don't oh, know, but... Yeah. Know, as, an example, you know, as an example, for instance, Sonic's in there. We already have the Sonic I know, right yeah, I know, I know you can't Alex, make... I need to worm that shit special. right out of you, man. Like, he'll get into that apple and eat that core out, believe me. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know what you're saying you can't do it because of Smash Brothers, but mentioning Snake, you know, is that a possibility? Oh, I know about um, Sonic is a... a you know, player. bearing in mind we are already working with Konami, you know, maybe... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe a Temptation Thursday. I wonder how that would do. <laughs> they, do some fucking, they do some cracking games as well, didn't they? Konami, like that. They isn't. Didn't they do like the turtles? Did they I was about to say as well. Could That's, you make a video game turtles? Sorry. Could you make the video game turtles then? Uh, you know, an example like that again without specifics. Konami licenses it from the uh, from the license holders, which would have been. Yeah. Um, uh, what's his name? Laird? I can't remember. Something, you know, the original, I think the original license, it's now it's Nickelodeon. Under Nickelodeon. It's Nickelodeon. Yeah, 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 yeah it's, it's Nickelodeon one. now. It didn't used to be. It used to be, I, I remember looking at, looking at, I can remember going after Turtles back, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, and it was Playmates. They were the master ah. licensee. They had all the, like, they, they had, because this was before anyone was making any, you know, any of the Turtles stuff. Back before there was resin yeah, turtles yeah. right obviously now everybody and their mum and their dog <laughs> can get the license he's got a license for turtles he's too busy he's too busy licking the water because he's just busy we'll get on it next year we'll think about it that's what i like to hear but you know that they would be licensing it konami themselves would be licensing it from uh the, the license holder and therefore yeah. just making the games and giving them royalties based on those ips and it's very, you know, you still then need to go directly to the license holder. Yes. Um, with, you know, rather than, you know, uh, you've got, you've basically, got, basically, you've got, you've got, it's not, basically, it's, it's like a little stream that you're on. Yeah. And you've got to paddle up it. And the more sort of complicated you move across, it becomes more streams and the waters get a little bit more difficult. I get what you said. It, the more complex you want to get into it, it gets so much more it leads to so many more breakages i get you i'm with you yeah, I mean, we've been going after pokemon for i don't know how many years it's the elusive white whale it's our uh, most <laughs> <laughs> going after seriously we've been going i mean we've been it. who would you make sorry 
Who, if you got Pokemon, who would you make? Oh, we've already made it. It's the most fantastic piece. It's, I've already made it. It's sitting there on my computer. It's amazing. You just um, want to get it, you want to get the license. You can sell the fucking thing. No, no, yeah. It's the statue. It, 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 it's the collect. It's the original. Because you, you know how it is, guys. We're after the products that have been around for years. It's the guys who grew up with it who are now our age who can afford the stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would have made the starters and the original starters all together in a diorama. Not would have. We did made it. Um, and but as an example, when um, you know, we're going after Pokemon for many, many years, not being able to do it. Um, then they brought out at Namco, uh, Bandai Namco brought out the game called Poken, which is a mixture of Tekken and Pokemon. Oh, characters. Wow. You know. oh wow! So I went up to them and go, hey guys, they're like, fuck off, mate. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go see uh, Pokemon. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> but then also as well now with uh, Pokemon Go, that's given them another another massive boost as well, hasn't it? Dude, that that Pokemon that Pokemon Go is I think it must have killed about a hundred children. How many kids are running out into the road looking for fucking Pokemon when you're driving? It's I was in, um, I told I'd said this before. I was in Singapore, and uh, we're in um, uh, one of the centres. And literally, I'm talking to a guy. We walk out. We just come from uh, Singapore Toy Game Comic Con, walking out. And uh, all of a sudden, there was a fucking stampede of people running out of the, uh, the centre. I thought there was a bomb or something. Literally, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> Someone literally got pushed on the floor and like 20 people jumped over this person. And I'm like, shit, what the fuck's going on? We're going to die. And then like, all these like, other guys got their phones out. And then like, two of them run away. And I'm like, shit, I better follow them. And the other guy grabbed my arm and goes, no, nah, no, nah, it's Pokemon Go. There's a, <laughs> a, a, there's, a, there's a rare Pokemon over there. And I'm not lying to you. I think it was like Evo Center or something like that. Or um, uh, what's it? Mandela Sands or wherever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genius, li yeah but literally it was like it emptied the fucking shopping center out. I'm not, exa <laughs> not exaggerating. It emptied genius. it out. And the cab queue was fucking awesome because there was a massive cab queue and all of a sudden we got in a cab straight away because everyone fucked off to get Pokemon. Crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. <laughs> God, I love that shit, man. But what we'll do there is, uh, sorry, we told you guys it was only going to be an hour. And, uh, I, I've just looked, oh, on, the, yeah, uh, I've just looked on the timer and it's been about two hours and 20 minutes, I think. Man, it's um, just cool, though. It's yeah. like hanging out with the boys at RT, man. It's awesome. Yeah, that's we're it, made, man. We're hanging out with the boys at RT. <laughs> <laughs> I got we're all family I got, here, bro. I got no one to high five. <laughs> 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 yeah. but, um, is there, any, is there was, anything before we before we jump off here, gentlemen? Is there anything you want to like tell people? Any up and coming news or things that you want to share? Give the links to where you are and how people can get in contact with you via our stuff as well. Yeah, yeah? I pulled up there. Good boy. No, um, yeah, you know, it's uh, appreciated you see in the in, in in the group that we have permission to at least, you know, obviously within reason oh, yeah. to be like spamming the hell out of them. So let's do it. Spam yeah. the hell out of Marty. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I said to you before, I mean, uh, I told you to keep, um, you know, to post those uh, factory things because I'm a huge, huge fan of them. Uh, there yeah. was someone who said it ruins yeah. the magic yeah. of it. <laughs> nah, rubbish. Well, rubbish. I like it. I like seeing it. I love seeing it all. Uh, I love seeing progress. Uh, and I love seeing it from start to finish. So, you know, really, really enjoy seeing it all. So, no, definitely post there for sure. Share it. Go for um, it. Yeah, you know, cool. we, really, we really appreciate that. You know, definitely if you, if you don't have issues with it, you know, well, let's be a bit more active in the RT uh, group yeah. as well, just to try and get the news out there. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. That would be fantastic. That, Thank um, you very much. Yeah, appreciate that. And, uh, you know, look, there is the, 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 the Rad Titan group represents, we go there, I go there, you know, quite, not, not just to see spying, but you're not just that, right? <laughs> but also it represents, to me, the elusive group of people that don't know about us. And I judge our progress as a company in making people understand, you know, to, I, I don't, so I don't, don't judge Chuckles' job, you know, job based on that, but you know what I mean. Is, <laughs> you know, but just getting the word out there because it's so essential to create this brand for the future. Definitely. So, that for me is the, the people that are in your group are, I believe. I mean, I know I saw you around the poll yesterday, it was quite interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, well, after we after we spoke, I was actually just trying to pull that up now. Yeah. After we spoke, uh, we were talking about how. 
the difference in um, what people collect. Um, trying to find it on here. There we go. Yeah. So uh, obviously, comic was going to be the one that kind of really stood out. Yeah, but that's the thing, um, you, you put them, you separated them, you split it up. You split up comics into two, yeah. Marvel and DC. Now, if you didn't put them into two, yeah, that would have been more, even more skewed. You know, because well, just... yeah, but also what happened as well was people were allowed to vote on more than one. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. sure so for sure. example, that guy, um, Neo Dragon, I can see his picture. One, two, three, four. I can see him on five different things here. Right. And, <laughs> so basically, uh, Marvel and uh, Marvel had 135. Actually, 139 because you had those. Uh, DC had 115. And then video game was about 53. So, I yeah. mean, uh, yeah, there's, and then you got like sci-fi, Star Wars, anime, horror. Uh, and then a few other things there, which uh, you know, anime will be really quite high as well, right? What's anime? Uh, not, not really on not on this group. Anime was only like twenty five, but uh, basically the the conversation we were having was just about um, collectors and what is the most popular in the statue side. That's what we were just yeah. talking about. So uh, it does obviously seem <laughs> video. Uh, sorry, video game is not as high as comic, which comic is easily the 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 head. The Absolutely. Head so it's it's that whole idea of because we're video game based only did that move into anime also attract new guys who are also in that you know you might even say there's a more of a link between anime and comics than you would see between comics and, and games. video games because obviously it started from manga you know maybe yeah. that's you know, something like that right yeah it's a good point but yeah that so going to rt of course apart from the you know the spying um is uh, also to see the recognition but not the rec recognition is not the word the um uh it's not recognition is the word uh just the sort of i know, what, uh, you, I know what you're talking uh, about acknowledgement it's a sort of like uh just yeah i guess you would say just who actually knows that we actually even exist mm. yeah i'm not just yeah. talking about just the name because you boys have you know you mention us all the time in your chat so big up big up to you guys on that and uh you know we you know, we really appreciate that but I'm just talking about, it's not just you know that, oh yeah, yeah, first figures, da, da, da. I'm talking about, you see a piece, you yeah. know it's first figures, rather than, yes. not the name, but the product. I get it. That yeah, I got it. is something that I, over the, keep going back to looking to see, hey, did Artorius make any difference? Did Simon make any difference? And I'll type it in the word Artorius into the group, and obviously our, our club is jumping with all of that. There's like nobody posting any of that sort of stuff. Yeah in Rad Titan, but of course it's full of all the other sort of stuff, which is what, you know, what we highlighted. And it's trying to get into the consciousness of the typical industry collector. And I'm talking about the guys who haven't got, here's the poll that you should be running, boys. How many pieces do you have in your collection? If you run that, when we, we can do it at the same time. Someone's just done it for us as well, but the vast majority of people are on one or zero in our club. Yeah, really? And it, I bet absolutely. And if you run that poll in your club, you know. But then again, I mean, you. Uh, anybody who hasn't got twenty in there, you boot them out. You kick them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you also don't know how genuine some of those answers are, do you? Well, you know, there's no reason to lie. But you know, for us, yeah. we know for sure that our customer. You can see it in the customer. You know, you said you said it. You saw it yourself. What's a sideshow? Who are these guys? I don't even know. Yeah, because these yeah. guys haven't even got a single item. It's not even a first figures item. It's an actual resin item. I've seen, like, for example, what you're saying is when uh, someone, for example, I've got a video here where I'm talking, I've got my, I've got my stuff behind me, and someone will all of a sudden send me a message and go, wow, that Wolverine bust, well, who makes that? And then on the comments, I'll say, oh, well, that's actually Sideshow Life Size Bust. And someone else says, oh, you're on this, not the Wolverine, but someone else goes, who is Sideshow? And I was just like, wow, really? Okay. You know, and that, that was like, yeah, but that's, that's, that's that actually saw that there. <laughs> Yeah, we've been though. We we go with I think the greatest some of the greatest compliments that we that I find from myself, you know, is when someone will say to me, someone will say on the thing, you know, on any page, not even our page, any page, they'll just be like, you know, I I found these things because Rad Titan, you know, shared them or or, or showed me, you know what I mean? And that I think that's I, I you know I take great pleasure in, in, in setting people up on their journey. The whole point, really, of us is to try without any agenda. And that's why we have to be totally just, honest. Yeah, most oh, yeah. important. But it, it comes back to bite us on the arse if we're not. But 
you know, tastes vary and stuff, but I do find that, you know, the most important thing is just to point people in the right direction. Cause I know that there's collectors out there, you know, you own, you, you're the only like a uh, Neo dragon said that on the last review he did, he's spot on. He said, you know, you need to find out who these guys are. If you like dark souls, cause they're the only guys doing the fucking dark souls. So you need yeah. to, if you like that, that's where you need to be going. And that's, that's partly the point. There are people out there that just that will want these pieces, but just don't know you're there. And it's the same with any company. It's not just you. Like Alex yeah. is saying, even Sideshow, XM, you know, Coat of people just like, who the fuck are they? It's, it's just... Now, me, you know, obviously, when you're in your own bubble and you're in your own community, you know, obviously, we know who these guys are. Um, but, you know, to the average guy, it's like, you know, they, you can have the best product, but if you don't, if no one knows about it, you know, what's the point? Hello, Simon. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> you know, Simon, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, no, I think I think because I think, I think Alex has just purchased that piece. I think once that comes in and we review it, you may regret not doing an extra seventy-five. I told you about <laughs> <laughs> emails. Go, what the fuck do you mean two ninety? What's the matter with you? Another, where's the two hundred and fucking ten? <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. But uh, yeah, so that's and as I say, I mean we've. Uh, we we did say we did sort of touch on it. We did say where um, your group is very unique. Uh, you got like uh, not in a bad way. You got very uh, loyal fan base and a very uh, uh, you know. When I go through your comments as well, there there is like a real uh, a community feel um, in that group. Where when you have that that volume of people, it's really hard to have that feel because there are it's so many small, groups where uh, one of the biggest sort of statue uh, groups has around the same number as yours and uh there's no there's no feel of community it's just here's my collection here's my new piece here's my this and someone going good piece i have it too and it's more there's no real i don't know uh there's i guess as well because um your, yours is more about your company so it's more people showing their love to you as well and with that one is more a generic statue group so i guess you can't have that i don't know but with, with your group, it, has a, it does have that really good feeling, a really unique feeling. The funny thing, thing, about, the funny thing is about that, like, when we just touch on the, the polls, like, we try and create these polls every three or four months. And the funny things I've noticed is that there's more and more new guys coming in. And obviously, you know, not a lot of these are new members. They have no clue about resin. So it's nice that we have these core groups that we can actually pass all these information on. And then they will start teaching the, you know, the, 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 the beginners. And it's like that kind of information passed down is, is really nice to see because it's like, hey, bringing them into this resin world, yeah. you know, like, like make them understand how this process works, you know, even if they don't have a statue, because we created these posts and like, like last year, this time last year or whatever, uh, none of them had, everyone was waiting for their Okami and their Artoris. It was like the numbers was like, hey, I'm, I don't have a statue, but I'm, I really love this club. And then now the starting to receive that product is it will be like wow, yeah, this is nice. yeah their first experience matters and hey, huge, huge yeah oh, like yeah. If, yeah if they if they receive damage we'll cover it we'll we'll, we'll sort you out and, you know all that stuff but for those guys that that were lucky to receive the packages in perfect condition man the response is like wow we we work we put so much sweat into this it's like planting the seeds and this is like the kind of the you know, yeah man the thing we taking the tomatoes in it. Yeah, I mean, you plant the seeds, now you're tasting the tomatoes and they're right. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> oh, no, it, goes it goes beyond that. We put such emphasis, as I said to you before, forget about 80,000 likes on Facebook. Whoop, whoop, you know, that's whatever. It's about the collector's club and it's about pushing people into that because it's a two way conversation. The moment you yeah. have a two way conversation is the moment that people realize you're just down to earth guys who are just doing yeah. what we love to do. Uh, and, you know, you know, there's that. But it goes beyond that. You know, Chocolate's done a fantastic job. We're now working with IGN in a way that, you know, we send them the Breath of the Wild link. And specifically, we requested yeah. a shout out to the Collectors Club. And when that like that video went live, all these people went, who the frig are these guys? And then, like, yeah, came yeah. to the Collectors Club. That's yeah. what we now have, um, you know, these, uh, these links that go out there. In that, there's like a little leaflet that comes with it, which basically says, <clears throat> check out the Collectors Club. We put the Collectors Club first. Everything yeah. is about, in the marketing, it's about pushing the Collectors Club. Because we know that is the only way that 
you know, that, that is the way that we feel is the way to differentiate yeah. ourselves. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. And it's also, um, yeah, it's quite easy. Sorry. Go on. I'm sorry, sir. No, I'll just say it's quite easy to get the, uh, you know, 20,000, 15,000 people on your group. But then it's also, you have to get that interaction. And once you have the interaction, that's great as well. Uh, you Amazing. can easily have people, I mean, like, we get like, um, I don't know, 20, 30 people do new every single day on the group. But there's not 20 or 30 people commenting that are new. Uh, there's a lot of people sitting back and it's hard. It's really hard to get more to interact. Really hard. There's a lot of lurkers. They, they, they yeah. Just Sit there, sitting there, and just oh, I'll look at your collection, and that's. It. But you know, yeah, but we have. I mean, you just because people may not be talking, don't mean that they're not supporting and buying. We have a lot of people like when we've when we've gone through. To be honest with you, when we went through the IA situation and we we made our statement, we made our stand about where we're at. I we had so many people that were just like, you know what. I never comment. I don't comment on your, I watch all your videos and your reviews and I buy stuff and I trust your opinions and, but, and it's lovely. And they're like, you know, and it's all like, like a test. It just says test or it's got like initial, no one is it, people that are anonymous that you don't know. And they're like, I just want to tell you, you handled yourself well. And I, we support you. And that's, it's those guys that they step, in when it matters and that's a beautiful thing so even the lurkers the ones that are not commenting not speaking they could still be you know people that are, are, are really really clearly and getting you know buying based based on what you share with well, them when um, when uh, yeah. alex contacted me um, it was around that time that all that business was, was exactly happening because of that time and that's the point we're one of the guys i know i'm aware i know and you give me the I other know. dog yeah <laughs> Well, that's, that's why I said with um, with, with you at the time. I said, uh, you know, you you said to me, "Oh, how's it going?" Blah blah blah. And there was all the talk about edgeware and all that sort of stuff. And then uh, you said to me about, you know, we're going to send you the uh, amateur asu uh, Akami sample. I uh, want you to run a competition. And I'm pretty sure I said to you, I just want to make it clear that this is all the stuff that's going on at the moment with Imaginary Arts. Uh, people have been very uh, loyal to us, but I think it's in, you know, right to tell you that this is happening. And you sent me like a the Michael Jackson made me in popcorn, going, yeah, just carry on. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of that, guys. It is the absolute yeah. reason why we contacted you. It was because of that situation. We yeah. knew about it, and that's why we contacted you guys. We wanted to be able to say, guys, this is an example of our product. You know, Chuck, we discussed this here. Yeah? We said, yeah, this, yeah. Is a, this is an example of our products. We know we live and die by the quality of our product, so we were happy to. Yeah, I mean, we, we knew what you guys did, and just, we, we just basically said, "Hey, do what you guys normally do." But for me, I just wanted that uh, Okami to be out there and give everyone a chance to 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 own the piece. Oh well, that, that as well. Yeah, that, 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 for sure. I mean, like, it's, it's nice because, like, because obviously part of the job was you know to make sure that people you know like, know about us as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I don't think everything's tied tied what? in. What is the uh, what's what's the latest release that we're gonna ex expect from you guys? What's the next thing to come out? We start getting into collectors' hands. Oh, release! Oh, uh, King. Oh my gosh! King is like the fucking blow up, boy. That is. Wait, you're talking about, oh, oh, in collectors' hands. Okay, this in collectors okay, hands, it's yeah. about to arrive on the ship. There will be uh, item two, Mega Man, Pac Man. They're about to hit the Sanship base. Sanship base. I think that's uh, it, isn't it? Camaro exclusive? Uh, Lucky Camaro hasn't left yet. Yeah, I think Camaro, yeah. Uh, those are on the boats right now in different locations. You know, that warehouse, that warehouse, that where. <laughs> Fuck it, let's make them all pay 20% extra. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we were saying that about... Uh, what are used to? <laughs> yeah, we were saying that about Sideshow. Sideshow used to have a European distribution, and they say it was too expensive to run. And they're a massive company. So clearly, they're talking shit because... You know, you guys can do it. And obviously, you're a big company, but you're not as big as Sideshow. <laughs> you're not a big company. Not a big no. company at all. No. You're so not a big company. I'm doing like yeah. three or four different jobs. <laughs> <laughs> the handyman. Do you know I what, want man? this job that's not going over to Rad Titan and being their marketing guy. You're staying here. You're not going over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, get well, yourself well, over. Get yourself I'll over. You're I'll more than welcome. I'll send you the details now, and we'll, we'll sort this out later. <laughs> it's, right, out. You know what? It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing when you sort of like when you're on this journey and it's and you you can st still be yourself you know the one thing about be doing this thing is it's it's felt it's felt just like catching up with a couple of friends and mm. uh i think 
intended for that because it's not forced. You know, it does feel like I'm honestly, I can, I, I mean, other than we've, I've had group messages with both of you gentlemen, we've never ever spoken and uh, it, it feels very seamless. And I think, you know, I think that's just the way that you conduct your business is that you want to be, you know, part of the whole, you know, I think you want to be like, you know, that's what we try to do as a show. You know, when we're unboxing things, I know things have got neat and tidy and all this, but you know, when pe people say to Alex, I miss the rawness of it. Do you know why they miss that? It's because it's it's like they're there. Really super clean and neat and tidy and crystal clear and the camera doesn't jitter and there's no, you know what I mean? When that happens, it looks, it can be a little professional and professional feels distant. You know, I like I always say, you, you follow people, you follow people, you don't follow companies. You know, you invest in people because people will try and protect you and look after you. But companies, not always do that it's all about the bottom line and the dollar so i think you know it's been a great honor chatting to you i'm really excited to see uh you know you just grow and grow and grow and hopefully you know we'll run competitions and share your stuff you know just like we would anybody else and i hope you do really well because i think you know as long as you keep doing what you're doing and stay stay with us stay with the collectors don't you know separate yourselves i, I don't think you can ever lose you gotta have you gotta have fun coming to work every day i mean I, I, I chat to guys on, on, on Facebook more than I chat with my real life friends and, and, you know, I treat them as, as part of the family. You know, it's not just like, okay, there you go. Send an email to CS. Uh, they'll sort you out. No, don't just pound that stuff off. You know, like, yeah. try and try and get involved. You know, I, I understand your frustration with, with you know, with, with, with growing pains we have with, with websites and stuff like that, but you know, just stay, stick with me, you know, that kind of stuff. It's absolutely. Just, you know, and you know, keeping it real is absolutely, what it's all about um you know i'm i'm very fortunate to have started this company at such a young age that the guy that i'm also growing i'm getting older with the customers at the same time so we're all on the same level it's not like i'm you know i, I have a fantastic partner who is the old dude who's the money guy and the financial guy who makes sure that you know the you know he doesn't need to do too much day-to-day -day stuff anymore because we have enough to cover the bills it's not like it was right at the beginning where we didn't know if we could survive. And he would say, hey, we don't, don't, you know, we need to stop this for a little bit because we can't afford to, if we do that in three months time, you're going to go bankrupt. He's amazing at that sort of stuff. He's also not the guy to be like in there and doing this sort of stuff. Um, yeah. To be at this age, the same as, look, I think we're all pretty much the same age. And that's where we can really sort of relate to pop culture at the same level and to be on yeah. the same level as everybody else. So if I don't know about that Snapchat shit, that's a bit. But it's to be able to keep it real. And just to, we we appreciate the fans because we can't do it without the fans. And you know what we talked about about as well is when we actually see people posting unboxing videos just to give the guys, we pay, we're putting more attention now onto the YouTube side of things, you know, that comes with the documentary that we're gonna be releasing tonight and what you guys saw yesterday, you know, all that sort of stuff, more emphasis onto YouTube and looking at YouTube videos that people have taken the time, you know, look at Neo Dragon, AKA Alex, right? Unboxing the Artorias, put a message on his group, you know, just actively putting messages in his video to say, you know, appreciate it because He's not getting paid to do that. He's doing it because he's passionate about it. That's amazing for us. You know, we're grateful like hell that he's taken the time to do that and to actually just to sort of take the time to look at people's unboxings, to watch them, to, uh, and he, he actually, uh, in that video, he was like, you know, you know, he touched on exactly what, you know, the RT boys are yeah. saying that, that we're in the club all the time. Do we have a day job? <laughs> and I said, and in the comments, I'm like, yeah, we do. He's like, oh, you watched it all. Like, yo. <laughs> what is well, it's like um, last week or the week, yeah, last Friday, we uh, we did a live chat and um, I was talking about Nightmare. It might have been the week before. Yeah. And uh, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't remember the price. And then I'm trying, I'm trying to find the price. And for some reason, I went onto the um, Facebook group rather than going onto the website. I was scrolling through. And it took, like George is talking, it took me about 10 minutes. I found it and I'm like, here's the prices. I go back to the questions and I'm like, Oh yeah, I should have just looked here because you guys commented and told said the prices. So you guys are watching live and you guys do put the comments on there. So yeah. 
<laughs> you know, you know, it's so That's important funny. to keep our fingers on the pulse, not just in terms of you know, what we're doing ourselves, but obviously what our competitors are doing to see what is pissing people off, what isn't pissing people off, what is people liking, you know, and to emulate the good stuff and to stay away from the bad stuff. You have to keep your finger on the pulse. Mm. Otherwise, you will just get obliterated. The competition is so fierce nowadays. Yeah, yeah. The barrier yeah. to entry is so low that we have to do the hard yards in the other areas, which mm. is this, which is we have to invest the time. We have to I be agree. creating that community. And, you know, we say at the end of every live stream, F for F is love and F for F is life. And it really is that because it's, it really is, you have to have that in order to be able to, to, to survive in this. It's really, really cutthroat. All the factories using the same stuff, same people. You talked about that sideshow item. I know, you know, who made that, you know, all, all the competitors. I know who's making what and where. I know it all. We all know it all. Um, so how do you differentiate by the by that fact? It's these little small things. It's how do we, you know, pioneering some small stuff like, you know, it's, some, it's the little stuff that makes the difference. Having that QC sticker, you know, you always let me know when you see the other guys doing it. That means that those guys are watching us and that would be a yeah. very, yeah. that would be, um, you know, quite, quite, a, quite a nice feeling to think that, hey, that we've actually made a difference that people actually know who we are. If they're following some of the same sort of things that we are doing, having people sign that name, on that, if that becomes something else, let us know, boys. What is up? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's 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 important. I, I agree with you completely. Yeah, I think um, to have that for learn, sure. Learning from other people's mistakes is 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 definitely more profitable than fucking making them. That's for sure. So being in touch <laughs> with what's going on, you know what I mean, and seeing where people are going wrong, and you know, I can only, you know, a lot of the time I can only we speak to people and we hear what's happening. You know, a lot of people tell us what they're unhappy with, you know, and the fact that you're getting your stuff out at, you know, at a really great cost and, and at really good time and your addition size numbers are, are sensible. And, you know, you, I think, I think you've, you, you're nailing it, man. I really do. And I've, I really do think you are. So I, I hope, I mean, I think these new, um, hopefully these, uh, these anime licenses that are coming, the things that you've worked so hard on, I, I hope they bear some serious fruit for you. Cause, um, I really think that nightmare is a fucking is next level. I re I really do. I think that that piece looks fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love the look of it, and certainly the king from for myself on a personal level. You know, I I I love all the tech and stuff. So, no, I wish you all the the best of success, and um, I hope that you'll come back on. You know, I hope that you'll never, never uh, you know that we can we can do this again and we can get together. And uh, maybe we can go through some news or something next time as well. But uh, it was a it was a great honour to. Uh, you know, we're doing a next pre-order or something like that. We can you know show the RT guys you know have it here and have a little discussion about that. You know. Yeah, hundred percent, definitely. Um, sure. You know, how easy was it to sort out? You might understand you were taking the biggest uh, dump. <laughs> And you know, said he went, you know what's funny about that? Is before, before I come live on this chat, I was actually talking to Alex, having that dump. So yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So, um, I know that's why I said it because we spoke off air and I said, oh, wait for George to come on. He's uh, he's doing his morning business clear, right? in the other office. Yeah. I'm in the other office. Clear, I'm, dropping, I'm, ready for I'm, I'm dropping the I'm dropping the kids at the pool. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, what we do then is uh, we'll we'll finish it there. Uh, that's just um, that's two hours and forty five minutes. So uh, we did say it was going to be yeah, half an hour time. to an hour. Family and, time. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been great. What we do is uh, we'll, we'll go off there and uh, you know big big huge thank you for this. Uh, thanks for coming on. And again, we uh, yeah we hope to see you again on here soon. First for figures, man. And get on to YouTube. Get out, check out Neo Dragons. Where he's got a lot of their pieces. He's been doing lots of reviews. There's a lot the of comments uh, on the comments below. I'll put the uh, the website, the Facebook group, and everything on there. So get, definitely get onto the uh, the Facebook group of theirs. And I'll try and add some images before, over before the door they uh, before they become too big. That they become and uh, too. Expensive, so at the moment, you know, everything's competitive and and friendly and love. So get in there and uh, support them. Because they're uh, they're our boys, so much love, man. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, much guys. Mad peace for that. You know, thank you so much. Um, you know, <laughs> mad love, and uh, we will be will be uh, you know we're just a phone call away, man. So yeah, try not try not to uh, be lurking so much on the group. 
All right. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right. All right. Yeah, we're going to come guys. out. We're going to be spamming the hell out of you guys. You'll be like, God, can you boys go for it? <laughs> go for it. Go for it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. All, All right. right. Much All right. Take it easy, guys. Peace.